Quit moving around so much, bobblehead. When are we gonna get another case, Sam? Surely the local lawbreakers must miss our esoteric brand of personalized criminal justice. Patience is a sharp razor to swallow, little buddy. Okay, don't scream this time. <gasps> ah! I got it! I got it! Hello? Leave Swiss cheese by the rat hole, or you'll never see your precious phone alive again. Jiminy Christmas Eve in a padlock sweat box. Some misguidedly ballsy felons napped our phone. Eerie. I just went cheese shopping. How did they know? Be sure it's Swiss cheese, right? And be quick about it. Ordinarily, I hate yielding to extortion, but I have to admit I'm half charmed by the sheer spunk of that oily little perp. Where'd you put the cheese, Max? Gosh, it was hours ago. You know I have the memory of a dried trout. Sadly, yes I do. Well, it's gotta be somewhere in this room. No comment. They say graffiti is the poetry of our time. Just what we need. More lame poetry. This might come in handy. <laughs> Don't do that again. No comment. 20 years worth of electric belts take up a surprising amount of space. it is unfortunately this is not Swiss cheese so what so the rat was very specific about wanting Swiss cheese in particular take that you law-breaking dairy products Sam no the cheese was innocent innocent I think not Voila, Swiss cheese. Or close enough to fool the casual observer, anyway. Don't say voila! Greetings! The members of the Benevolent Brotherhood of Vermin would like to thank you for your offering. The members of Sam and Max would like their phone back now. If you don't mind. I regret to inform you the situation has changed and I am unable to comply with your request. A list of additional demands for the return of the phone is as follows. Now, let's discuss this calmly. Let's debone the smarmy little skis and see if the phone's in there. I ain't talking, coppers. Jimmy Two Teeth ain't no rat. Uh, well, I ain't talking. I'm thinking about stuffing a light bulb down your throat, perp. Go ahead. I've been a little hungry. Hey, dog face, your partner's giving me a headache. You mentioned a headache. Would you like some aspirin? Oh, and while I'm at it, is there anything else I can do to make you comfortable? Are you thirsty, perhaps? Light's too bright? Well, that's sporting of you. Now you mention it, I really don't like being up here so high. I got me a thing about heights. They make me nervous, you know? Oh, really? Don't like heights, eh? How'd you like it if I dangled your greasy hide out the window? Hey, you wouldn't. Wait! 
I warn you, I'm known for my fuzzy white butterfingers. It's true. You should see him trying to tie an ascot. All right, all right. Have mercy. I've had mercy. It was unpleasantly gooey, like, well, like things that have fallen onto pavement from a great height. I give up. Take your phone and let me go. Ah, oh, for the love of... I wish I could unsee that. Hello. Yes? Great gouts of steaming magma on a beeline for the orphanage. We're on our way. Yeah! Ow! Where's the rat? I let him go. Who was on the phone? It was a commissioner, Max. Multiple reports of malfeasance in the neighborhood. Oh, joy! That's my second favorite feasance! Idiot. We've got to get down to the corner store right away. Good old Lou. Who's Lou again? The bowling ball, of course. Say there, unfashionably dressed street urchin. Oh, you made me mess up. Now I have to start all over. Yowzers, you are one ugly kid. Hey, I know you. Oh, that's right. You're one of the lovable scamps from that old TV show about the singing soda jerks. It's called the Soda Poppers. And the 70s are not old. Specs, it's you. Wow, an actual celebrity vandalizing our neighborhood. This is great. Boy, you sure were a famous, oddly underdeveloped teen celebrity at one time. I'm still famous. Are you? Um, like a million point one times more famous than you. Well, we're really more known in the 18 to 34 year old repeat criminal demographic. So Specs, what are you up to these days? Any new projects? Yes, I have a new light in my life and his name is Brady Culture. He's the genius behind the Ibo Ocular Fitness Program. You really should try one of his videos. Ibo sounds like an electronic archery toy. Ibo is the truly visionary ocular fitness program. Try the video today. Where can I find a copy of the video? They carry them over at Bosco's. You should get it. Sounds fascinating, but enough about that. You can never get enough of Brady Culture's eyeball. Well, that's nice. Tell me something about that trendy modern street art you're perpetrating. What about it? How did you select your subject matter? He looks like a fried egg. It's Brady Culture. He's the genius behind the Ibo Ocular Fitness Program. You really should try one of his videos. I'd rather try a fried egg. Sounds fascinating, but enough about that. You can never get enough of Brady Culture's Ibo. Do you live to paint or do you paint to live? I don't know why I do it. I just have to paint. Are you aware that vandalism is illegal? And worse, unoriginal. We like to punish people who do it who aren't us. How could this be vandalism? Everyone loves Brady culture. Well, we'll leave you to it. But you have to agree to paint me next. Sorry, I only paint Brady culture. Max, you've got the TV schedule memorized. Weren't the soda poppers going to be featured on one of those grim celebrity tell-alls today? Oh yeah, on channel 173, the Child Star Expose Network, which we only get when it's convenient.
Have no fear, simple citizens. The freelance police are here to keep the peace. Violently, if possible, you called? It's just you two? Where's the SWAT team? Where's the National Guard? Where's NASA? NASA? Hold on, Bosco. What's the problem? What's the problem? It's a terrorist! A munchkin terrorist! He'll be the death of us all! Where is this Lilliputian agitator? Are you blind? He's right there! Hey, it's another one of the soda poppers! Isn't he the one with the ladder control issues? Yeah, Wizard! He's a former child star? Poe, oh, just lock him up and throw away the jail! Exactly what is the nature of Wizard's malfeasance? He's delivering videos I didn't even order! Brady Culture's Ibo? What is that? Oh, it's something bad, I can tell you that. Videos. And look at that display. It's subversive and hideous. I don't know any white guy with a fro like that. I hear that. Have you actually witnessed this Ibo video with your own eyes? Only a fool would watch a strange video. You watch it. Any idea why a freakish relic of the 70s would unload videos in your store? Think about it. No individual acting alone would ever deliver videos of his own volition. <laughs> it makes no sense. I smell a conspiracy. I think you're just catching the hot weenies in an updraft. <laughs> no, it's definitely a conspiracy. I think we got it. Okay, anything else? We'll chat more later, Bosco, but right now it's time to get up close and personal with that pint-sized evildoer. Stop that crazy man before he kills us all! Hey there, Mr. Wizard. No need to be formal. My friends just call me Wizard. And so do my enemies and lots of people like you I've never met. Everyone calls me Wizard. What exactly are you doing here? Delivering videos! Take one! They're free! What's the story with these videos? Brady Culture's Ibo is the ocular fitness regimen for people on the go! Did Bosco actually order this many videos? How should I know? And did I mention they're free? What, you just deliver them whether people order them or not? The word must be spread! Ibo is the path to enlightenment and ocular fitness. Hmm. What can you tell me about Ibo? Ibo is a revolutionary new program of isometric exercises to promote ocular fitness. You can learn to move objects with your eyes, even see through walls and clothing. What if I don't wear clothing? You gotta watch this tape. It changed my life. Well, that's nice. What is? Are you aware that you're breaking the law? Come on, guys. There's no law against giving away free stuff. Unlawful deliveries are punishable under Section 9, Article 7, Title 11 of the Personal, Private, Public, Professional Conduct Penal Code. You made that up. True, but we could write him up for littering, trespassing, and disturbing the peace. I have to deliver these videos. Boy, what a monotonoid. Can we arrest him now? In a minute, little buddy. Put your hands on your head. You're under arrest. Aw, oh, come on. It's a free country. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who told you that? This guy's suffering from some pretty severe delusions. Seriously now, you're under arrest. Come on. You don't have to make a federal case out of it. No, we don't have to. We want to. If you'll excuse us, we've got shopping to do. Take a copy of the Ibo video while you're at it. It will change your life. Well, it is on special. And we are running dangerously low. Public restrooms. Unholy temples to all things unsanitary. I wouldn't go in there for all the TNT Landia. I'll do 
do it. Uh oh. Time out for number one. Looks like he opened his floodgates. I hope he enjoys it as much as I did. If you really love someone, give them the gift of cheese. Oh, I just can't wait to see the look on his face when he gets it. What the? Time out for number one. We're saved! That's a whole lot more entertaining when it's not happening to me. It's pretty entertaining either way. <laughs> oh, he wet his widow pants. <laughs> classic. Just classic. I mean, wait. My evil plan is being threatened. Good thing I have the other two twerps to handle it. Mwahahaha. <laughs> uh, it's still not quite right. Mwahahaha. <laughs> hey. You just gonna leave him there? Uh... I don't want to wake him up. Free videos? Don't mind if I do. Brady Culture's Ibo for Ocular Fitness. The revolutionary isometric exercise. What's so revolutionary about it? See through walls and clothing, roll your eyes at lightning speed, lose five pounds of eyeball fat. Oh good! I can never seem to lose that last five pounds. What do you say we start office movie night a little early today? I'll bring the caramel coated sugar logs! On this week's edition of Oh, Is He Still Alive? We look at the stars of the 1970s television hit, The Soda Poppers. I love shows that destroy all our cherished delusions about the stars we once loved. During The Soda Poppers' heyday, young Spex was the role model for obsessive neat freaks all over the globe. Ticker tape free, ticker tape parades were thrown in honor of the soda popper who never missed a spot. Backstage though, things were quite a bit dirtier. Speck's obsession with perfection caused massive delays in shooting and infuriated co-workers. He famously demanded over 11,000 retakes of the line, You made me mess up! Made all the more annoying because of his tendency to repeat the line immediately after reading it. Following the show, Spex was rarely seen in public, although he did make one ill-fated venture into celebrity tag team mud wrestling, getting pinned in a record three seconds as he desperately tried to wipe down the ring with a dish rag. The meltdown utterly enraged his tag team partner and good friend, the dog from My Mother the Dog, who stormed out of the arena without a word. They haven't spoken since. Coming up next, the soda popper who couldn't always keep it in. I bought that VCR at the supermarket. So you know it's a good one. Still smells like asparagus though. Okay, Max, ready for that ocular workout? No, stop! We don't have any popcorn. Sweet alligator dentures soaking in formaldehyde. That was close. Quick, before it starts. Hello, I'm Brady Culture. You may remember me from Culture's Clubhouse, the massive worldwide television hit that ran for six episodes in 1970. Hmm. What you are about to see will change your life forever. So watch closely. Now listen up, you tasteless Philistines! You love me. You adore me. You want to name all your children after me. I love you. I adore you. I want to name all my children after you. Sam, look! 
ocular fitness, my eye. That videotape hypnotized Jimmy Two Teeth. I think I like him better this way. We've got to find this Brady culture and stop him before he hypnotizes every consumer of cheap self-help videos. Ooh, can I have his hair when we're done? Only if you keep it on a leash. Hey, Specs. By the way, we're freelance police, and you're under arrest. No, I've really got to finish this, but thanks anyway. Um... Seriously, you're under arrest. Come along quietly and no one gets hurt. Actually, I prefer that you don't come quietly. Must. Finish. Painting. Excuse us, we've got important things to do. Don't we all? Hey, a can of spray paint, and it's not even empty. This could use a little improvement. Rain freeze. Can you believe we get paid for this? I love this country. You made me mess up. <laughs> now this is quality television. Except, hold on. My evil plan is in jeopardy. Who dares to oppose me? Hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> better, better. Well, we've admired our handiwork long enough. Maybe just one more second? Okay, let's go. You look like you could use some therapy! Not from a wide-eyed circus freak like you- Hey, it's another one of the soda poppers! Me? Right, you're, uh... Peepers! I don't know what you're talking about! My name is Civil Pandemic, licensed psychotherapist! Are you sure your name is Sybil, not Peepers? Absolutely! Civil Pandemic, licensed psychotherapist, that's me! He's trying to pull a fast one, Sam. Where's your gun? Violence is not the answer. Since when? Sam, we're dealing with a dangerously delusional psychotic here. Obviously. How about a little analysis? Certainly! Tell me what's bothering you. Every time I watch television, I want to shoot something. That's quite normal, but you might want to try Brady Culture's Ibo video. It's very soothing compared to regular television. Ibo? Yes, my runny poached egg-like eyes could use a workout. You won't regret it! Enough said. Excuse me for a minute, would you? Sure!
Hello. Hey, Bosco. Hey, you just gonna leave him there? Uh. We'd like to patronize your fine establishment, my good man. By patronize you, he means we want to buy stuff from you, not mock you. We probably will mock you, but that's not what he meant. I know what he meant. Don't patronize me. So, what do you want to buy? What have you got? Well, I I've still got that big sale on cheese. Oh yeah, cheese! I want that! And I might have another item of interest behind the counter. I accept your thinly veiled invitation to ask about the item behind the counter. Oh, it's just a little something. I like to call a tear gas grenade launcher. Tear gas grenade launcher? Oh yeah, I really want that! Well, it's the latest in Bosco Tech innovation. It'll clear out any room in no time guaranteed. I feel really close to you right now. We got your tear gas money right here! Really? Well, all right, here you go! One tear gas grenade launcher. This is a salad shooter filled with onions. But it works! Trust me, trust me. Oh, by the way, did I mention my automated defense system? No, what's it do? The 10,000 just cover the cost of materials, you know? Oh, I'm sure. It's okay, everybody. I'm all right. Sibyl. What is that? Don't worry, this won't hurt a bit. <laughs> but it will make you cry. <laughs> Please, Sam, allow me. Now, Peepers, this is going to hurt us a lot more than it's going to hurt you. Just kidding. It'll definitely hurt you more. Sweet dreams, peeps! I can see you! <laughs> oh my, that was great. That was great. Wait a second. My evil plan is in ruins! The dog and bunny will rue the day they crossed me! Rue the day, I say! <laughs> Thank God! I've been locked in that closet so long I was starting to invent life stories for the mothballs! I've got to sit down. Oh my God! He's still here? Call a cop! You're in luck, ma'am. Sam and Max. We're freelance police. Civil pandemic. Licensed psychotherapist. Nice to know ya. Arrest that lunatic immediately! We've already taken care of it. He's out like a candle at the bottom of a fish pond. Say, that's perfect, because I think he was hypnotized by someone, and now I can do something about it. Wow, hypnotized, really? Can we make him act like a chicken? What's the usual procedure when someone's been hypnotized? Typically, a hypnotic state can be revised after rendering the subject susceptible to new input. Come again? You've got to knock them unconscious to bring them out of it. Then you can help them overcome the hypnosis. Allow me to demonstrate. Take control of your mind! I don't think he can hear you. Sure he can. He's unconscious, not dead. Minor detail. Destroy the intruder in your dreams. Regain control. What? Hey! What am I doing here? What's going on? Sybil? My name's not Sybil! It's Peepers! Oh, yes, it is. Are you okay? How do you feel? I've got a bit of a headache. I had the weirdest dream! And there was someone unusual in your dream, wasn't there? Yes! Brady Culture was there! He kept telling me to do stuff! Aha! Uh -huh. I knew it! That fiend hypnotized you to do his unspeakable bidding. Peepers, what's the last thing you can remember? I remember checking in at Brady Culture's home for former child stars. He has his own nuthouse? Wow, we gotta meet this guy! 
Where can we find this home for former child stars? Oh, it's very secret. No one must ever find it. Think of the scandal. But we need to find it so we can stop the madness, in a manner of speaking. I want to help, but I just can't remember where it is. Oh. But my brothers might. They went with me. Uh, hey, I, I didn't do anything really embarrassing, did I? Nothing a simple exorcism can fix. Oh, dear. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, take control of your mind. Is it working? I don't know. Destroy the intruder in your dreams. Snap out of it, you big baby! Wh what's going on? Why is my outfit all wrinkled? He's back. Quick, act like a chicken. No, tell us where we can find Brady Culture's home for former child stars. We've got to stop that fiend from hypnotizing anyone else. The home? It's 227 something. Wizard would remember the street. He always does the driving. Can you take us there? Are you kidding? I've got hours, hours of ironing to do. Well, that was helpful. Hello. Take control of your mind. Destroy the intruder in your dreams. Nicely done, Sam. You're a natural. Oh, where am I? Who are you? Don't worry, we're freelance police. Police? Oh no! He's getting away in that truck! Quick, follow that soda popper. Hurry, Sam. He's getting away! Watch out! Oh! Take the wheel, little buddy. With pleasure! Got him. Yes! Don't shoot! Aside from the fact that we just plugged your truck, why would you think we'd shoot you? Except for the obvious sport value, of course. It's just, you always see cops on the news beating up some guy just because he's a former child star. We would never dream of hurting former child stars. We just need to find the home where Brady Culture keeps them. Oh, why didn't you say so? It's right over there, across the street. Jumping elephant fleas. How devilishly convenient. Thanks. Um... Does anyone know where I can find a bathroom? Hmm. It says here they only treat patients with something called artificial personality disorder. Sounds tasty. What's in it? Apparently it's common in former child stars. Symptoms include, uh, let's see, obsession with fame, violent reactions to hairstyling, and an unconscious desire to see one's peers getting older. Forsooth! You don't even know what that means, do you? No, but it sounds all classically literate.
Disturbing little monkey. Reminds me of a job I had once. You were a monkey? Essentially. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Do you think I might have artificial personality disorder? Hmm, interesting. Symptoms include, uh, let's see, obsession with fame, violent reactions to hairstyling, and an unconscious desire to see one's peers getting older. Hey, I know! I could psychoanalyze you! Will this be painful? Only if we do it right. Now, there are a couple things we can try. We could look at some ink blots, we could try some free association, I could interpret your dreams for you. How do ink blots work? And can we make them ourselves? It's easy. I just show you some pictures, and you tell me what you see. Your responses can reveal things like obsessions, or uh, obsessions. Take a look at this, and tell me what you see. Susan Lucci holding an Emmy. I see. Now, how about this one? Pigeons on the marquee at Man's Chinese Theater. And this? An autograph written in Braille. Now this one. What do you see? A cheering crowd of lanky albinos. And this one? That blotchy thing that a flashbulb does to your eyes. Well, your choices indicate an obsession with fame. That's one of the indicators of artificial personality disorder. I'd better make a note on your chart. Very interesting. We should test you for the other symptoms of APD. Whatever you say, Sawbones. I'm not a Sawbones. I'm a psychotherapist. Tomato, tomato. Hey, I'm getting hungry. What's free association like? It's a test of your reactions to things in your life. I say a word, and then you just say or do the first thing that comes into your head. Dance a samba, recite the alphabet, scream at the top of my lungs, that sort of thing? Hmm, interesting. Have we started already? No, but now we will. Ready? Is that the word? No, the word is tumbleweed. Can I sit in the tattoo chair while we do this? Me first! Trigger word induces unusual desire for tattoo in subject. Possible symptom of euphoric dyspepsia. Now try this one. Crown. Just do or say whatever comes naturally. Whoa! Don't shoot! Violent reaction! Violent reaction! You should see him at Thanksgiving. Hmm. Violent reaction to the word. Very interesting. Comb. Do you think this would work better if I lie down? Subject wishes to assume supine position. Trigger word apparently inducing sleepiness. Well, this has been illuminating. What's the verdict? I'll let you know after years of insanely expensive treatment. Anything to support small local businesses. We can always sell organs on the black market to raise the cash. Just so they're not ours, little buddy. Do you think I might have artificial personality disorder? Maybe, but people with APD are known for their violent reactions to hairstyling. Let's try some more free association. That will tell us more about your unreasonable reactions to the elements of your life. 
Remember, I'll say words, and you just do or say whatever comes naturally. Ready? Sure, go ahead. Cow. This reminds me of a cat I had once. Trigger word brings up memories of cat. No, no, the fox does. Brings up memories of fox. No, the fox. Oh, forget it. Causes subject to forget foxes. Possible Alzheimer's. How about this word? Drill. Ah, the cheeky. Pulled over from the days when you could sell all kinds of cheap crap without a successful children's television show. Subject displays symptoms of ironic nostalgia complex. Dryer. Whoa, don't shoot! Violent reaction! Violent reaction! You should see him at Thanksgiving. Hmm. Violent reaction to the word. Very interesting. Well, this has been illuminating. Yes? Your responses lead me to believe that you have an unusually violent reaction to hairstyling. You should see him at the podiatrist's. It could be symptomatic of artificial personality disorder. I'd better mark this on your chart. You have two of the symptoms listed on this form. Am I deranged? I don't want to alarm you, but probably. Can I have your hat when they commit you? Sure, little buddy. Can you really learn anything from my grotesque, nonsensical dreams? Oh, absolutely. They reveal your subconscious. It's like peeling an onion. Youch! Now just relax and try to remember your dream. Okay, here goes. My dreams always start in the office. But this time, things were different. Mmm, yes, I can picture it. Tell me what happened. I realized there was someone else in the room with me. Oh, you had a special guest. Who was it? It was you! Me? My, my, my. Oh, I represent your mother. You do? Of course. The feelings of trust, of safety. Besides, I figure the old hag's gotta be in there somewhere. That's psychotherapy 101. Insightful! Tell me, in your dream, was I doing anything queer? You did say something pretty queer. You ungrateful pup! I went through three weeks of labor for you! Wow, it is your mother. I was right! As I usually am. I remembered that I'd just gotten something from the bakery. Oh, sounds like you and your special guests there were having a little celebration. What did you get? It was a wedding cake, ripe for the toppling. A wedding cake? <laughs> you want to marry her? Uh, well, let me just say, I hope you two will be very happy together. Uh, thanks. Not a thing was on TV. Suggesting you feel television is an intellectual wasteland, devoid of any and all worthwhile content. No, that can't be right. I turned to leave the office. Oh, was that the end of your dream? Yep, then I woke up screaming. I can see why. Do you think I might have artificial personality disorder? Maybe, but people with APD are known for their subconscious desire to see their peers age. I'd like to tell you about another mundane but strangely compelling dream I had. All right, let's examine your disturbing subconscious desires a bit further. Okay, tell me what happened. I realized there was someone else in the room with me. Oh, who was your special guest? It was Max. Ah, yes, your imaginary friend. Excuse me, I'm standing right next to you, lady! In your dream, was Max doing anything unusual? 
Well, he was saying the Pledge of Allegiance to the tune of Camptown Races. I pledge allegiance to my gun, doo-da, doo-da. But that's not unusual. I had just gotten something new from the bakery. For a celebration, perhaps? What did you get? It was an overly frosted birthday cake. Wait a second. The birthday cake, your friend... You subconsciously want to see your peers get older. I could have told you that. This is a definite symptom of artificial personality disorder. Yes. I mean, I hope it's not serious. I'd better mark this on your chart. Wow! It must be artificial personality disorder. You've got all the signs. I bet I can get a paper out of this. Best ship me off to some sort of home for former child stars, then. I've signed this admissions form, but you'll have to arrange your own transportation. I'm about to be really busy publishing the details of your case. Since you're crazy, can I drive? Jumping vehicular homicide, no! Where we going, Sam? Back to Brady Culture's home for former child stars. Oh, okay. Come on, little buddy. There's justice to be served. Can we get ice cream afterwards? Justice makes me hungry. This reminds me of that place where Aunt Trudy lives with the medicine smell and the rubber sheets and the enormous mute Indian. Sounds like a million laughs. Yeah, mostly after medication time. Where is everybody? Pulchritude above doubts. This is Culture's Clubhouse. Jumping Lon Chaney in a boffo fright wig. Brady Culture, I presume. You know who I am? Wow! Evil plans really do work. Don't get too excited, Stretch Pants. The Freelance Police are here! Yes, actually. I've been waiting for you. Really? Next time, try leaving the front door open. Save us all some grief. Allow me to explain. <coughs> Uh-oh. I think we just triggered a soliloquy. Good thing I have the attention span of a pint of yak butter. I never wanted much. Just to be universally loved, that's all. And to be number one in the TV ratings for the 1971 fall season. But no! Those worthless hacks, the soda puppies, with their matching shirts and their cute little jingles. They came on opposite me and stole my audience! I was never offered another role. And now you two vigilantes won't even let a poor, down-on-his-luck actor mass-hypnotize the entire viewing public to become his worshipful fans forever! How cruel. Is it over? I think so. So? Whoops. Since you've ruined the beautiful irony of having my arch rivals run my promotional campaign, I'm afraid you'll just have to take their places. In your dreams, culture! No, my friends. In yours. Hey, that tickles! Become... Video Delivery Man. What? 
What's happening? Oh, no. Oh, no! What are you doing? I, I don't know. I... You were in on it all along! I told you it was a conspiracy! I told you! But then you already knew, didn't you? No, Bosco. I must deliver videos. Call the CIA! Call Interpol! Call Mickey Rooney! Must deliver... Mickey Rooney? Videos... <laughs> I must deliver videos. Oh, don't even try. I love that part. Uh-oh. Either I just walked into the Salvador Dali Memorial Wax Museum, or I'm dreaming. You love me. You adore me. Become Video Delivery Man. Do my evil bidding and so forth. <laughs> Holy brains in a blender. I'm still hypnotized. If only I could remember what Sybil told me to do. Destroy the intruder in your dream. Oh, yeah. Hey, Sam! I'm up here! Oh, hi, little buddy. Brady stole my body! I hate when people do that! You gotta get me down from here! Okay, little guy, I'll save you. I think someone needs to turn the lights out on your career, Brady. What? No! Oh, that Brady culture. He turns the world off with his smile. Whoa! Gotcha! Yay! <laughs> oh, Mr. Culture, I have a surprise for you. Really? For me? No! <laughs> oh, my. Thanks, Sam. A little stringy, but good. Oh, I just remembered. I'm supposed to be somewhere. Bye, Max. Wonder what would happen to the picture quality if I gave this a tug. No! I must be on TV for all eternity. No! Oh, yes. That's much better reception. I will be number one in the ratings. Now. Hey, Brady Cheese. What is it, fool? I'd like to introduce you to a little friend of mine. No, the cheese must stand alone. <laughs> and another one bites the cheese. Oh, uh. oh no, he's awake. We're done for. Save the girlish histrionics, Bosco. I'm all right. Hmm. I was merely the victim of your garden variety video delivery hypnosis scheme. Okay, but what about your co-conspirator? My co-conspirator? Holy underpants draped to the mast of a sinking pork rind freighter. That hirsute egomaniac kidnapped my little buddy. Any idea how I can curtail this culture crisis? Brady culture. I, Bo Man. <laughs> Stay away from him. He's got it in for me. Sorry, Bosco. No can do. I've got to save my furry little pal. I don't suppose you have a Bosco Tech device that stymies hypnosis-inducing energy beams. Oh, a, a hypnosis blocker? Yeah, I thought about making one of those, but I wouldn't even know where to begin. I've got to find something. Quick! Thanks, Bosco. Do me proud!
Doc. Max is gone. Well, most of us outgrow our imaginary friends eventually. No, that megalomaniac Brady Culture's got him. I see. Of course. Hang on. Were you implying that Max is imaginary? I wasn't implying anything, though he does seem a little improbable. You see him too, though, right? True, but then I'm a psychotherapist. I've got to find some way to block a hypnotic ray. I don't suppose you, as a brain specialist of sorts, would know anything. Uh... <laughs> Great suffering lab rats, you do know something. Out with it, before my synapses fuse into a milky puddle of slag. Well, it's a gross breach of doctor-patient privilege for me to even tell you about it. But one of my more technologically inclined patients drew me a diagram of a contraption he claimed would block hypnosis. That's just the sort of ridiculously lucky break I need. It's a huge violation of every reasonable code of ethical conduct, of course, but you being a policeman of sorts, I suppose it's okay to give you the diagram. Hmm, my lack of solid engineering background has finally caught up with me. I can't make any sense of this. I'd love to help, but engineering is one of the few fields I haven't tried. Sorry. Max isn't going to like it when he finds out I ruined our reception. I've got to tell him as soon as possible. Hey, Bosco. You okay? Yep. Thanks, Bosco. Do me proud. Bosco, take a gander at this. What is it? A death threat? Even better. It's instructions for the latest in Bosco tech innovation. Hmm. Well, let's see. A colander of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can build this. Just need one thing. What's that? Something for that antenna thing at the top. Antenna, got it. Will a make-do antenna do as a make-do antenna? Yeah, okay. Let me just add a little Bosco tech innovation. And here it is. The most sophisticated hypnosis blocking helmet the world has ever seen. Happy days are here again. Uh-oh, seems like the old moolah gauge is running on empty. Ah, take it. Just stop that Brady culture. He's got it in for me. You're a credit to dementia, Bosco. You'll have to pay for the next one, though. I'm coming, Max. Rule number three, always wear protective headgear when confronting diabolical villains with hypnotic devices. Hand over the Lagomorph culture. Sam! Boy, am I glad to see you. Johann Sebastian here only knows how to play one song. What's this, a rerun? Didn't we just see the dog getting hypnotized episode? <laughs> Well, if you really want to watch it again... What? Another triumph for skanky ingenuity and ordinary kitchenware. Give it up, culture. Your quiche is cooked. Time out for the cavalry! You've colored outside the lines of the law, Brady culture. We see you! And this time we Going are... to get hypnotized again. 
<laughs> I'm sure you all remember the commands I taught you. So now, my foolish pawns, attack the dog! Ouch! Attack Brady Culture. No! Attack the dog! Ouch! Become me. Somersaulting Democrats in a crate of sauerkraut. Patience is a sharp razor to swallow. You crack me up, little buddy. Who's that supposed to be? Stop this foolishness. Attack the dog. <laughs> Attack me! Whoops! Ow! Become yourselves! <laughs> Oops! Attack the dog! Ah. It's a stack of those Ibo videos. You may as well give up now, Culture. Your hypnotic ray thingamadoodle won't work on me anymore. True, but I have my adoring minions. Yeah, they don't really like you, though. Shut up! They do so! I forced them to. Become Brady Culture. <laughs> Do my evil bidding. Worship the videotapes. What nonsense. Attack the dog. Ouch. <laughs> Worship me. No, me, me, worship me! You're my minions, mine! Attack me! No, me! Attack me! Me, me, me! Yes! Oops! No, wait! I mean. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. Smart hey, move, hey. Sam! Ooh, you played ooh, him like a two dollar glockenspiel! I learned all my best tactics in the first grade. I tried to send you semaphore signals with my ears, but you know how I always get the K and the V mixed up. You crack me up, little buddy. Well, I guess we should dehypnotize these poor saps again and be on our way. Let me! You know how I adore gratuitous violence. Well, that's that, Max. Another boot to the pasty ass of crime. Thank goodness this whole hypnotic mind control thing didn't go any further. That could have been really annoying. It's great to be on your show, Myra. I'm a huge fan. I just can't seem to stop watching for some reason. I got it! Ah! I got it! <laughs> Hello. Yes? Yes? Sweet mother of...
double jeopardy backstroking in butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? That was the commissioner. You will never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Stiller? Gavin McCloud? Wink Martindale? Close. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you jest. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly. I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away. We're at our earliest convenience. Great! I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. It looks like candy, but I'm pretty sure it's fish tank gravel again. I've had worse. What ho! Samuel! Maximilian! What the? Oh, you're probably wondering how I know your names. Not really. Psst, it's me, Bosco. What's with the slanted soup strainer, Bosco? Bosco? <laughs> I know not that moniker. I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom, the third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. <gasps> we want to buy something. Hmm, yes, hmm. Quite so, quite so. What have you got? Well, there is still one can of shaving cream the Blooming Skin Bodies haven't gotten yet. Oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's funny. I've never seen you shave. I didn't mean myself. And I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? <laughs> it's the latest in Bosco Tech Innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecules. Very useful, very useful. We'd like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Uh, let's see, uh, 30 shillings would be about one million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Oh, worth every shilling. Trust me, trust me. We'll take your last can of shaving cream, old chap. Splendid. Spiffing! Tickety-boo! Just bring it to the counter! Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Thanks, Bosco. Pip-pip! Honey nut cheerio! I could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Horse up, pig! Dog! Pig dog! The skin bodies rule the streets! <laughs> Blast! Bugger! Blind it! Bollocks! The little blighted did it again! After him! I mean, Tally Ho! Tally Ho! Where are we going, Sam? <laughs> the skin buddies can't be stopped! Hey! After those rats! There they are! Let's get them! How 
do those laughably small wheels move so fast? You'll never catch us! The skin bodies can't be stabbed! Take the wheel, little buddy. I thought you'd never ask. The skin bodies can't Oof! Hey, the shaving cream! Okay, hold on tight, little buddy. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Well, here we are, Max. The TV station with programs too old to be contemporary, too new to be retro, but consistently derivative enough to be popular. W.A.R.P. Television's so mindless, you can't help but watch. Oddly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. You crack me up, little buddy. Stand aside, casually attired stagehand. We're Sam and Max, freelance police. We've come to save some pathetic hostages from the clutches of... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Number one, I'm not a stagehand. I am the director. The director! Could I fool... Number two, we're no longer holding the auditions for animal cops with crippling mental disabilities and a lust for dance. Oh no, we're not actors. You got that right. I don't think I've ever seen worse acting in my entire life. And yes, I have seen Keanu Reeves' performance in Toast, the musical. Sam, I think my hypersensitive ego may need stroking. Don't look at me. Next? Who's next? You don't seem to understand. We're highly untrained police officers. Look, hats off for dedication, guys, but I'm just not buying the police act. I feel so invalidated. We're looking for Myra Stump, the darling hawk of- Do not mention that name in my presence. Which name? Myra or Stump? Either and or both. What's your beef with Myra? Let's just say Myra and I have creative differences. I'm creative and she isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question? You and Myra, why the hate? Look, Myra runs her show her way, and I run every other show my way. If she doesn't want me on her set, I could care less. You mean you couldn't care less. If you could care less, then you do care some, which doesn't really... No, I was right. I could care less, because I care even less about what you're saying right now. Oh, burn! Quiet, knucklehead. What are you doing here, anyhow? What am I doing here? I'm holding auditions for Midtown Cowboys. What are you doing here? Midtown Cowboys? The critically panned but publicly adored sitcom about two cattle ranchers trying to make it in Midtown Manhattan? Yes, well summarized. You're hiring extras? No, I'm hiring the stars. The two main characters went on Myra a couple days ago and I haven't heard from them since. I need replacements ASAP. Sam, did you hear that? If we can pass one lousy audition, sitcom stardom will finally be ours! Rocketing to fame for the most insubstantial of reasons. That truly is the American dream. We'd like to apply for that instant stardom you promised? You want to audition? Well, if there were anybody else here, I'd tell you to forget it, but okay. All right! What do we do? I'm going to have you play a scene from Old Yeller. Tell me you've seen it. I'm not into horror movies. It's the classic boy gets dog, dog gets rabies, boy shoots dog story. Max, I want you to play the boy. Yes! Boy! That is so me! And Sam, you play the dog. Oh. Okay, Sam, ready. I need you to act like you've got full-blown rabies. Understand? What's my motivation? You're a mad dog! Now, show me, rabbit. Um... Grr. No, dig deep. You should be just... Frothing mad! Hmm... Brilliant!
hunt. Now that's what I call diseased. Thank you, thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the little people who- Zip it. Okay, Max, you've just realized your dog is walking death, and you'll have to put him down for the good of society. Really? You're sad, you're despondent, you're grief-stricken. Now, show me the emotion. Uh, boo-hoo? You call that emotion? I've seen Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared a national Botox reserve. Grief, I said. Give me grief. Uh... <laughs> Perfect. Now, the fateful moment has arrived. Despite your immense grief, you must put your beloved companion out of his misery. Okay. Uh-oh. <gasps> oh. Idiot. What demonic force possessed you to do that? The demonic force called acting, Sam. You should try it sometime. Good thing I had my anti-hypnosis helmet built into my head. Or I'd have one too many holes in the head. Bravo. Bravo! Such realism. Such authenticity. I was convinced you were actually shooting him. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over! You're hired. Head to the set next door and we can begin filming immediately. Let's hurry, Sam! We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left! Alright, people, let's get the stage set up. The celebrity host will be here any minute. Oh, right. The crew's working on Myra. Stupid, no talent, fat face. Weren't you just. I think she just defied the laws of physics. Sorry, you'd be amazed how many times a day I have to do that. Things tend to be hectic here. Doesn't bother us a bit. Sam and Max, consummate professional actors, reporting for duty. <laughs> you said duty, Sam. I knew you guys were right for this show. Speaking of which, could you perhaps explain the show a bit? Okay, here's the drill. On Midtown Cowboys, you play a pair of cattle ranchers trying to raise a herd in an apartment in Manhattan. My Uncle Ernie did that, except it was pigs. And not in an apartment. I only see one cow. It's a small herd. You're struggling, okay? Okay. You've got this landlord, Mr. Featherly, who has a very strict no-cows policy. Devilishly inconvenient. I begin to see from whence the hilarity sprouts. Yes, Featherly is always barging in, and you try to hide the fact that you have a cow in the apartment. Lots of sight gags, usually something gross winds up happening. Simple enough? Great. Where's the script? Well, there's a slight hitch. The cow ate most of the script, so you're going to have to ad-lib the show. Ad-lib? Yes, make it up as you go. Improvise. Well, I guess our regular life has given us plenty of practice. Don't worry, you'll be working with Philo Pennyworth, who plays Featherly. He's a brilliant actor, classically trained, globe theater and all that. Just set him up to do something funny and he'll handle it from there. Check. Anything else? Actually, yes. We did save one line from the script, and it's really important to work it in, because it's the product placement that pays for the whole show. One of you will have to say the line. Me, me, pick me! All right, Max, your line is this. Better get the serious toothpaste. I like it already. We're as ready as we're ever gonna be. Let's start taping the show. Okay, now remember. Your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! They probably had a cow. Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! Let there be light. There we go. Life of the party. Aha! I know you've got a... Well, 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 who's your guest, boys? This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la range. And frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. 
Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army day. Goodness, who left this lying here? Say, what's this? I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said Mugu Gai Pan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Whoa, super! I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Interesting. That's one word for it. Hmm. There's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. <laughs> this moo moo whatever stuff is really good. Uh, what's it called in English? Cow pie. Really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like. <laughs> Now? Now. <clears throat> Better get the serious toothpaste. Zoom in. And cut. Phew. That was comic gold. The network is going to love it. Naturally. I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. I just don't see how you can sing and be a judge. I don't think the public would swallow that. Hey, Sam, do my eyes deceive me, or are those our formerly hypnotized former child star acquaintances, the soda poppers? Sweet jellyfish paste on a stick, you're right. What are the odds? Could we find another judge? What about one of those guys? Hmm, I don't suppose either of you would be interested in being a judge on Embarrassing Idol, the hot new show where we make uncomfortable entertainment out of people's misplaced faith in their own singing ability. Oh, me, me! I promise I'll be completely unbiased in my abuse of the contestants. Fine, fine. Take a seat. Goody! I get to sing! Welcome back to Embarrassing Idol. The judges are chomping at the bit, so say hello to our first contestant, Peepers. <clears throat> Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Well, that was a bit sloppy, but I particularly liked how you hit that high note. That always impresses me. I think you'll get my vote. I'm definitely voting for you. After all, you are my brother. Very impressive. You sound almost exactly like a sick cat being dragged through rusty farm machinery. But this is a singing contest, so I think I'll have to vote for someone else. Um, is there anyone else? Not so far. Can I look at these? Sure, take them. I've got them memorized. Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Very impressive.
Look, Max, there's the door to Myra's set. Let's get in there and liberate her literally captive audience. Sam, forget the hostages. There's somebody famous. It's Hugh Bliss. Who Bliss? No, Hugh Bliss. Inventor of prismatology? Help millions unlock the power of their personal color spectrums? Right. The stage magician turned happiness guru. Like we didn't have enough of those already. I want to meet him. Fine. But if he magically pulls another rainbow butterfly out of somebody's ear, I'm leaving. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Yeah, we know. And you are Sam and Max, freelance police. <gasps> How do you know? Do you believe in magic? Because I do. So, Hugh Bliss, what brings you to WARP? I too am here to meet Myra. <gasps> How do you know we came for Myra? Oh, 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 don't you see? I can read your mind. As the resident Doubting Thomas of this crime-fighting duo, I consider it my civic duty to say, prove it. Okay, think of something, anything. 6,373,411.98 Sam? Lucky guess. Was it? Think of something else. Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan! Was he right? Big deal. Everyone thinks that. Oh? Think of something else. <laughs> Enough of this ridiculous farce! Stop it! <laughs> do me! Do me! Oh, oh my! And that's unspeakably depraved! Yeah, you got it! Wow, you're amazing. Dazzle us with a feat of ledger domain, why don't you? Okay, I'll show you the magic of prismatology in action. Pick a color, any color. Ochre, ochre! No, mauve! Burnt sienna! Uh, how about a color I've heard of, hmm? Pick a color, as long as it's red, green, or blue. It's not easy being green. Oh, but it is with magic. Ah, I know what you're thinking. Is it real or is it illusion? Say, Hugh Bliss, can we get a picture with you for our scrapbook of instantly forgettable memories? Splendid idea. I wish I'd thought of it. Oh, and in fact, I did. He Hence the camera. Now gather round. But how will you take the picture? By magic. Okay. Say chocolate covered puppies. Chocolate, chocolate covered, covered puppies. puppies. So where's the picture, magic man? Oh my. I seem to have misplaced it. <gasps> hmm. Check your pockets. Maybe I left it there. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your little joy fest, but I've got a situation here. Never fear, pretty lady. Hugh Bliss is Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our game show host went on Myra hours ago, and he still hasn't come out. Think you can fill in till he gets back? Can a butterfly fly? Yes, it can. Oh, what do I do? When a contestant comes to the podium, just read him a question from the card. Then, when he gets it wrong, insult him and tell him to get off the stage. Oh, no, no. Prismatology teaches us to love everyone, no matter what. Right, just read the cards. Okay. I still love you. <sighs> That's where I'd stand if I were the host, which I'm not. Nah. We've got a contestant, people! Hit it! From somewhere deep within the bowels of WARP, it's Who's Never Going to Be a Millionaire? With special guest host, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Our first contestants are a pair of professional freelance police officers. They enjoy firing their guns randomly and running over things. Please welcome Sam and Max. 
Listen, Sam, they love us! Welcome! You know the rules. If you can answer even one question correctly, you'll walk away a millionaire! Start loading the armored cars, Hugh, because my brain's stuffed with enough worthless trivia to power a small Chilean village for decades. It's true! Okay, are you ready? Oh, happy day. It's an easy one! If a man sets out from the Horsehead Nebula in a spaceship traveling at thrice the speed of light and his father leaves from Rigel 2 at the same time going half the speed, how many nanoseconds will it be before time paradox causes the first man never to have been born? I'm not sure, but I'll say false. That's not really a valid answer. You lose! This is an outrage! I demand a recount! We do have a fabulous consolation prize. A copy of Emetics by me, Hugh Bliss! No thanks. I'm content to leave with just my burning shame and newfound sense of inadequacy. Okay! Find out which poor schmuck will be the next to blow his chance at millions right after these messages. Hey, a perfect fit. We've got another contestant. Hit it! Welcome back. Our next contestants are these guys again. Okay, are you ready? Hmm, the question is, am I blue? No, Hugh, you're not blue. Oh dear! Oh me, oh my! That's absolutely right! Yes. Congratulations! You're a millionaire! We're rich! Filthy rich! We just went bankrupt, so we will not be back after these messages. I don't believe it. Well, this is awkward, but we don't actually have a million in cash. Sweet mother of all quiz show scandals. We'll have to give you a million dollars worth of food stamps. They're right over there. Hold on. Can you buy deep fried licorice ropes with food stamps? We'll take it. One, two, three, 174, 175, 999,999. And a million. Let's go spend it, Sam. It's burning a hole in my pocket. It's putting quite a bulge in mine. What's the story with this show? Cooking Without Looking? It's a cooking show aimed at motorhead bachelors who have never seen the inside of a grocery store. Is there a big demand for that? You'd be amazed. See ya. Probably. This is quite realistic. Like that animatronic kid on the Cosby show. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the cooking show for the typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Filling in for Chuck Flagon this week, these guys. Just go with it. Oh, um, hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. 
Oh, greetings, worshipful fans. Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've got some furious cooking to do, so let's get right to it. What are we making, Sam? Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. Make sure to include red dye number two. If there's not at least some possibility of malignant tumors, it's not real bachelor cooking. Every chef has a signature ingredient that no one has ever heard of or used. Mine's MSG. If you put in enough that you feel a burning sensation in the back of the neck, forearms, and chest, you're just about there. Don't skimp on the lard. That's right. If you take the lard out of lard ass, all you have is ass. Well said, Max. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes, and through the magic of TV cooking show time, one gorgeous, delicious cake, ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us. That's where they keep the question cards. It's polite to knock. You do know we're taping a show here. Great day in the morning. It's Myra Stump herself! Yourself. Can we come in and see the show? Can you? Don't you mean... Uh, may we come in and see the show? That's much better. No, we're at full capacity. The only people getting in now are famous people who are appearing on the show. Your eyes look a little spirally. Are you feeling all right? Of course I am, sweetheart. By the way, when was the last time you brushed your teeth? And you should really be flossing. You certainly sound like your normal self. But why are you keeping everybody in there? I'm just doing what I always do. Slave and toil to put on the best show possible. It's just, after opening presents from well-wishers, I felt so compelled to make this show extra special. Ken, may we appear as guests on your show? I excel at talking about myself. Are you famous? Perhaps. In an internet petition or there ought to be a law kind of way. Not good enough. I'll need evidence of your explosive star power. I blew up a public restroom last week. I want to see a copy of your recording contract, for one thing. Well, what if we... Recording, contract, and a clip from your hit TV show. You're not anybody these days if you don't act and sing. Recording contract, TV clip. Piece of cake. No cake. I'm on a diet. But I will naturally need evidence of the latest juicy scandal you've been involved in. We have to be scandalized? Of course! What kind of show do you think this is? Are you sure you want us to answer that? Look, it's very simple. Show me a recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a scandal, and I'll squeeze you in. Oh, is that all? As it happens, we brought a clip of our wacky hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. We're the stars. Well, I'm certainly impressed with how far standards for entertainment have fallen in this country. Um, thanks? But you're also going to need a recording contract and a nice juicy scandal to be a guest on my show. I'm gonna go get my autograph book. We'll be right back. It's too nice to stay indoors. You boys should go play outside. And you should stop making that face, dear. It'll stick if you're not careful. What face? Max, how nice to see you! I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? 
Yes, by which I mean, huh? It's my new career. I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. So you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. What was it you said about a photo? My new tabloid, the Alien Love Triangle Times, needs a cover photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity, or alien as the unwashed masses calls them, caught getting cozy with some of the locals. Sybil, I'd like the record to show that although I support you as a friend, your latest project makes my skin decidedly crawly. Me too, and I like it. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. Sam, this is perfect. This photo is a capstone. It succinctly summarizes over 30 years of extraterrestrial-related photographic evidence. Sybil, that photo is a hoax. Exactly. I couldn't have asked for better. Now I can print the paper. Available at newsstands now. We're famous. Hooray! Can we begin misbehaving now? Begin? It's Sam and Max. I saw you on the telly. How do you watch TV from in there? Oh, I've got monitors you don't even know about. Hello, sir. What's ho, old beans? We want to buy something. Quite so! We come bearing one million American dollars. Now hand over the voice modulator. Blimey! Food stamps? Well, I suppose I must accept them. Bolded Dash government conspiracy. It's hogwash! Complete card swallow! Here then is your chemical-based voice modulator. This is a helium balloon strapped to an inhaler. But it works. Trust me. Trust me. Holy chipmunk, Ari is warbling out of a souped-up 78-speed turntable. It works! Thanks, Bosco! Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! Hey, can I try my pipes out on this thing? Go right ahead. Frankly, we can use all the contestants we can muster. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Busted down hound dog blues. <coughs> Howling at that drippy old honk of moon. Thinking about the rings on the great raccoon. 
Road to someday, bits of me are strewn. And let's hear from our judges. Bravo! Your wobbly tenor is way better than Peeper's shrill squawking. Your stylings are quite interesting, but I noticed you never really hit a high note. Peepers is still getting my vote. You sing beautifully, and your lyrics are enchanting. But Peepers is my brother, so I pretty much have to vote for him. Oh. Remember, folks, on Embarrassing Idol, the decision of the judges must be unanimous. Stay tuned for more exciting action after this. And we're cut. It's okay to sing again if you want to, by the way. Could improve your chances. Tell me, old judge, what gruesome qualities do you look for in a singing performance? Fraternity! I'm voting for Peepers no matter what! He's my brother! The one who didn't forget my birthday today, I might add! I said I was sorry! Happy birthday! Thanks! I'm glad somebody remembered! I said I was sorry! What more do you want? A treat would be nice! Isn't this also St. Boniface Day? Patron saint of carnivorous plants and spiky things? I think that's next week. What kind of perks go with this gig? Do you get fancy dressing rooms and candy sorted by color? Ooh, craft services food. Have them bring me a roasted Canada goose stuffed with lightly bruised olives, please. Not likely. I ordered a cake for my birthday, but they never brought it. I think the craft services crew all went in to watch the Myra show, like everybody else. All we got was a basket of tomatoes. Ugh. What kind of preposterously un-American weasel are you that you don't like tomatoes? I like them just fine, but they don't like me. What do you mean? I once spent 12 hours in the bathroom after mistakenly eating a cucumber that was sitting next to a tomato on the plate. Say no more. Enjoy your judging. Catch you later. Uh-huh. A little ketchup is always good on a cake. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Happy birthday! Oh boy! Birthday cake! That red frosty looks tasty! Excuse me. Boy, that was really. Uh, oh, really? Uh, uh oh. Time out for number two! What the? He'd better not be going to see Myra. Well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll just have to finish the show with only two judges. Whatever you guys agree on goes. Vote for me!
Testing, one, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Busted Down Hound Dog Blues. <coughs> May the starfish justice not impugn. Thinking about the rings on the great raccoon. Blowing like a zephyr on a dew. And let's hear from our judges. I admire your courage even more than your singing. You've still got my vote. Thanks, little buddy. You really nailed that high note! Whoa! And you're less sloppy than my brother is. You've got my vote. Hey! All of the remaining judges have agreed. We have a winner! No! Congratulations, Sam. Here's your recording contract. In Bottom Records. It's like a dream come true. Specs, I'll get you for this if it's the last thing I do! Right after I get back from Mount Rushmore. Rushmore? I'd better go after him. I just remembered. I have to feed my goldfish. Are we still taping? Uh, be sure to join us next time on Embarrassing Idol. Yes? Oh, you two again. Well, what is it? You've got the length of one commercial break to explain yourselves. Don't be alarmed, but I'm beginning to suspect that you might be hypnotized. Don't be silly. Hypnotism is just an excuse people use today to abdicate responsibility. I hate how this country's become a bushel of Bill and Betty brainwashies. Hypnotized or not, that sounds like Myra's patented blend of lovingly cutting criticism and charismatic know it all -atry. Remind me what your requirements are for guests on your show? Of course, dear. I'll need to see your recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a juicy scandal. What if we have our own video game? Video games? Ugh, those things will ruin your eyes. They're awful. We do have a recording contract. Bin Bottom Records. Take a look. You should have us on as guests. I like my guests to be celebrities audiences are talking about. Have you been embroiled in any juicy scandals lately? Our landlady thinks I'm the one who broke the dryer in the basement. Come back when the media is talking about you. And don't forget to watch behind your ears first. Actually, we graced the cover of the current edition of the Alien Love Triangle Times. How's that for a scandal? You'll have us on your show now, yes? Oh, I suppose so. If only so I can talk about America's lamentably endless fascination with depravity. Yay! Naturally, I will expect you to be on your best behavior and agree with everything I say and answer every question I have and don't interrupt and keep your elbows off the table and use your indoor voice. What about... While you're on my show, you stay in your seats at all times. You do not interrupt me when I'm talking, and you treat the audience with the utmost respect, even if you become less sure with each passing year that they deserve it. Now, I'll call you on stage in a minute. Gosh, Max. Celebrity is just a never-ending set of arbitrary goals one accomplishes to appease a dismissive and distracted, if not entirely absent, authority figure. I don't know if I agree, Sam, but I've begun my decadent slide into a depraved personal hell just in case. Give her a hand, everyone! Bessie Bovine reading from her new book, The Heart Has Four Stomachs, Ruminations on a Life in Hollywood, out now in all major bookstores. This microphone is starting to spark from overuse. But that doesn't mean we're ready to pack it in. We've got the stars of the not-quite-canceled sitcom Midtown Cowboys, who also happen to be the winner and judge of TV's Embarrassing Idol. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Matt.
Hold the hayride, little pal. That bear seems more than slightly hinky, in the mesmeric sense of the term. Shadier than a fat man's ankles. Let's take it down like ducks in a gutter. Hold it! My guests sit at that end! But that bear has got you. Sit! We'll just sit where you want us to, ma'am. Lovely. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would appear that the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. We're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, you talented, hot new celebrities who've taken the entertainment world by storm. So naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. I'd like to sing a song from my upcoming album, Feathers and Furious Scribbling. I'm almost certain the audience might probably enjoy that. Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. She's at brunch today with some baboon. And so I wrote this extremely catchy tune. Thank you, Sam, for putting the numb back in musical number. What a wonderful way to remind our audience that you don't have to be talented to be famous. And a perfect segue into my latest tirade about the lamentable state of modern popular music. I mean, blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, yak, yak, yak. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, 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 yak, blah, blah, blah. Testing, one, two, three. Blah, 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 yak, yak. I'd like to sing, if I may. Is that wise? Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. Whoa! Careful there, Tiger! That was wonderful! I'm so moved I almost don't have a long hectoring screed in me! Oh no, wait! There it is! Thank goodness! Self-referential songwriting is a dangerously blah 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 yak 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 yak! Blah, 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 yak, 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 I'm not yak, touching yak, that body, thing. Body, 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 I'd probably yak, get yak, shocked. Yak, 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 blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. There's something you should know about that picture in the times. I'm not sure. I want to know anything more. Maybe you big Hollywood types thinks it's funny to flaunt your polyplanetary pickups, but the rest of us find alien love triangles, frankly, disgusting. But the photo is not quite what it seems. How so? It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved. Someone the picture doesn't show. Ooh. How shocking. Who? Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. Oh my! Audience, shall we bring her back out again? At the risk of making the obvious comment, that was shocking! Is she breathing? A little, but the creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts! I wanted to ask it a few questions, and maybe use it to hypnotize Katie Couric. Another glorious dream bangs its chin on the dirty pavement. On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. Oh, I was just getting warmed up. Do you think Myra will have us back on the show again soon? Um, speaking of unlikely, did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see, there's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn cartons and cigarette butts. And processed bread logs loaded with tranquilizers and antidepressants. Bread logs make me logy. Let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet. Sam? Good news, Max. I think I just gave birth to a bouncing baby hernia. Higher! Ugh. I got it! I got it! Ow! Hello. Yes, Commissioner? Holy cap wearing catfish flopping a crime beat. We're on our way. Did he get the notes I sent him? Yes, but he said to stop carving them into the suspects. He can't read them without his bifocals. What if I just write bigger? Forget that, Max. We're after the most infamous organized crime outfit in the city. 
The Toy Mafia. The cutthroat killers with no respect for human life, but an odd predilection for delightful children's toys? The same. I love those guys! The Commissioner has reason to believe that the Toy Mafia's secret headquarters are located in the one place no one would ever suspect. Teddy Bear's Mafia-Free Playland and Casino. The sallowest place on Earth? Oh, boy! Well, it's not going to be all laughs and dyspepsia, little chum. It's a rescue op. The Commissioner sent an undercover mole to investigate, but he hasn't reported in weeks. Our job is to make contact with the mole and see if he needs help. Is he a large, star-shaped mole, or more of a beauty mark? No idea, Max. To find him, we're supposed to give the code phrase, Does the carpet match the drapes? And what'll he say? He'll say, Well, I never. Then smack me across the face. Sounds great! Let's do this! Hey, an ace. An extra card up your sleeve never hurts. Except when the other guy catches you with it and decides to riddle every inch of your body with high-caliber bullets and then dump your mutilated corpse in an empty field. Yeah, except then. Where are we going, Sam? Teddy Bear's Mafia-Free Playland and Casino. Goody! Generous friends, days and weeks and tokens to spend. We're just regular businessmen, just you and me and Teddy Bear. Welcome to Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Ah! That face. My name's Lovey Bear. Boy, do we have some fun and games for you. Here, take this token amount of tokens as our way of saying welcome and go spend a lot of money. Holy domesticated ursins, Max. Lovey Bear here's got the same head as that hypnotic teddy bear from Myra's talk show. You think that little talk show bear had a litter of giant babies? I don't know, Max. Call it canine intuition, but I think our mole discovered something about these teddy bears he shouldn't have. We've got to find him and get to the bottom of this. You're lucky this mask doesn't have ear holes, or I might have heard that secret conversation you just had right in front of me. What? Sorry, I wasn't listening. You give tokens to first-time customers? That's right. Go on, enjoy. Live a little. It just seems like bad business sense. Okay, tell you what. Thirteen hours from now, when you're trying to pawn your little friend here to pay off the vig, we can talk then about bad business sense. Okay, we'll come back then. I hear you have a mole problem? Hey, it's a genetic condition. You should have seen my father's back. Holy cow, I'm actually being too subtle. First time that's ever happened. Maybe I should just stick to the code phrase. Does the carpet match the drapes? If Don Ted E. Bear says so, they do. Don Teddy Bear? I thought this place was mafia free. That's right, kiddies. 100% mafia free. No mafia anyways. Come on, True. Thanks, Lovey Bear. Enjoy. And remember if you're not losing, we're not winning. Look, Max, it's a beloved carnival game with a delightful mobster twist. What better way to relax than by offing fake rodents in the most violent way imaginable? Note, please supply your own firearm. We always do. Insert token to play. Let's give this a shot. <laughs> I'm in pain. These rats are gonna pop up, see? If the rat's keeping his mouth shut, you don't touch him. 
but if that rat's singing, you put a bullet in his head, capiche? Now have fun. How can we not? School guidance counselor was right. I should have become a mafia hitman. Look, there's the prize! As advertised, it's an almost entirely worthless teddy bear refrigerator magnet. Hey, let's find someone with a metal plate in their skull and redecorate their forehead. Oh, Max, you really know how to find the bright side of everything, don't you? Yes, I do. Now let's go shoot something. A one-armed bandit. Insert token to play. You see that, Sam? It's a little play on the well-known colloquialism for slot machine. The fun just never stops at Teddy Bears. You're on fire! Sweet mother of bleary-eyed gambling addiction, we won! Yeah, we won, but there's no prize! You gotta hand it to Teddy Bear. He really puts the bandit in one-armed bandit. Hold it! What's the password? You may enter. Hello there, freaky bearhead wearing card dealer. Hello, I'm Cuddly Bear. Wanna play cards? Does the carpet match the drapes? Wanna play cards? We asked first! Wanna play cards? Hmm. We'd like to develop a gambling addiction, starting now. Well, what do we have here? I'd say the circus was in town. But I know for a fact they won't be here till next Friday. So you must be here to play cards. Depends. Who are we playing? The name's Steak Charmer. Leonard Steak Charmer. And let's just say I didn't rack up 10 million tokens by getting lucky. <laughs> How'd you get them then? By cheating? Look, Rabbit, Leonard Steak Charmer's no cheat. He's just that good. Okay, what's the game, Steak Charmer? Truest test of skill there is. Indian poker. Leonard Steak Charmer, huh? You don't look like a Leonard Steak Charmer. Oh, yeah? What do I look like? You look more like, a uh, Boris Crinkle. That's what everyone says. That's enough for now. Okay. Although I could have sworn you were a dog, not a chicken. A common mistake. Grrr. Hey, Leonard. How exactly does one play poker of the Indian persuasion? You know you're off to a good start when your opponent doesn't even know how to play. You ever consider that we might be card sharks? Or shark sharks? You know, the kind that eat people for being overconfident? Whatever. Look, it's simple. We both get dealt a card which we put on our forehead without looking at it. So we can see each other's card, but not our own. Pretty sharp, McGruff. Don't call me that. And you make a bet if you think he got the higher card, or fold if you want out. That's it? Yep. Then we see who's got the highest card, and then I win, like always. Well, when you put it like that, we'd be fools not to play. We'd like to try our hand at a hand of Indian poker. You won't regret this, Hound. By which I mean, I won't regret this. Oh, and try any funny stuff with your partner and I'll shoot you both. That seems fair. I got 10 million tokens says I got a better card than you. I'm betting it all. Sweet second mortgages on a summer home. We can't match that. Tell you what, Pooch. I'm feeling so confident. I'll give you 10 million to one odds. Just bet one token and you can win the whole pot. Those are mighty good odds. No, they ain't, deputy dog. Because I never lose. <laughs> so, you're in or out. 
Sure, we'll bet a token. Yeah. Sorry, Rover. You lose. Stick Chama wins. Mama was wrong. Gambling does pay. I'd say better luck next time, but it'll take more than luck to beat me. Yeah, it'd take a sturdy oaken staff to really do the job. We'll be back. Just remember to bring your money. That is one shiny nose. Almost as shiny as yours! Keep it up and you'll get a shiner too. Wow, it sticks! Hello, cuddly bear. Wanna play cards? We wanna play cards. Back for a little more public humiliation? Just a little more. Deal. All right. I'm betting all 10 million, and you only got to bet one. So, you in or out? Sure, we'll bet a token. Eh, sorry, Fido. You lose. The dog wins. What? I... You... You cheated me! What are you talking about, Leonard? How did we cheat? You... Pay up, Stick Charmer. Mama, why weren't you watching over me? I'm ruined. <laughs> Let's go, Max. Leonard and his dead mother need some alone time right now. Yeah, let's go see if we can play Whack the Rats ten million times in a row without passing out. A one-armed bandit. Insert token to play. Hey, Bosco. Nice flapjack! Son of God and Blue, who is this Bosco? Hey guys, it's me, Bosco. No! But you may call me Jean-Francois Bandepart, the new A French anarchist. So, Bosco, why'd you get Frenchified? They saw right through my British disguise. I don't know how they did it, but they found me. Who? The Mafia! The Toy Mafia! They've got it in for me! Take a number, guys! What manner of nightmarish atrocities has the Toy Mafia committed against you? Nothing, yet. Ah, but I know what they are planning. And it is terrible! Are they planning to tie you down, tape your eyelids open, and turn on the 24-hour Midtown Cowboys channel? Well, not that bad. I have reason to believe they are planning to deliver something to my store. Another delivery conspiracy? What could a band of ruthless toy mongers possibly want to put in here? I don't know. Uh, but it is no matter. They will never be able to deliver anything to my store. Or my name is not Jean-Francois Bandepart. But your name's not Jean-Francois... They don't know that. We want to buy something. Oui, oui, monsieur. What do you got? Oh la la! Behind the counter, I have the latest in Bosco Tech Innovation. A device non parallel chocolate! Is that good? Oui, oui. This I call a miniature listening device. It can fit in any cravat, under any chapeau. What's it do? It listens. You can use it to hear secret conversations, no? No. I mean, yes. Okay, stinky pants, here's your ten million. By the secret stench of St. Gainsbourg! These are not American dollars! No, but there are ten million of them! Hmm... Well, the prices of Teddy Bears can be quite useful. 
I accept. And in return, I give you the miniature listening device. This is a bug. Precisement. Does this thing really work? Does this thing really work? That answer your question? Now listen up, maggots. I am a bug. Drop me in enemy territory and I will get all the information you need. You just make sure to pick me up again and I will repeat every word. Every word! We'll be putting you in some situations that could be a mite precarious. Think you can handle it? I was a non boy! You don't want to know what I've been through. They slaughtered ladybugs. Ladybugs! And that's not all. I seen them kill. Larvae. Larvae! So yeah, I think I can handle it. Now I need some shut-eye before the mission. Put me in your pocket. In your pocket! Move, maggot! Sir, yes sir! Where are we going, Sam? Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Goody! Welcome to Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Step right up, kitties. We got fun and games. Still no prize. We're wasting our money, Sam. Hold it. What's the password? You may enter. Did you get it all? Yeah, I got it. Now listen up. Here's what they said. Hold it! What's the password? That's gotta be, what, a hundred times I've come through that door today, and you still don't recognize me? It's the bear heads, boss. They all look alike. <sighs> Leave the gun, take the cannolis. You may enter. Now, get me in that pocket. Move! Sir, yes sir. Hold it, Mugs. Not Mugs, Max. I don't care if it's Teddy Ruxpin. No one gets in without a password. Oh, right. That would be... what again? Why don't you tell me? Leave the gun. Take the cannolis. You may enter. This is it? Where's the food? Surely there's a buffet back here. Hey, look! That must be Teddy Bear. Where do you wise guys think you're going? Who, us? We were just browsing. We frown on that around here. I'm Chuckles, the casino pit boss. I've had my eye on you. Uh, how long have you been watching us? Long enough. Do I look any taller than I did ten minutes ago? Your win at poker was, shall we say, creative. Why, whatever are you insinuating? That was nice work. You also somehow got the password to let you into this room. Very clever. I'm impressed. The Toy Mafia can use guys who are long on brains and short on scruples. Are you interested? What Mafia? Exactly. Joining the Toy Mob dovetails nicely with our personal goals. We accept. I've always wanted to be a thug. Officially, I mean. 
The fact that you've already got your own animal costume shows great initiative. But before we can accept you into the family, there are two jobs I need you to do for us. Chuckles, bad news. The original meatball sandwich has been stolen. There are three jobs I need you to do for us. What kind of jobs? Oh, the usual. I want you to lean on somebody, I want you to whack somebody, and I want you to recover a small item that belongs to us. Who do you want us to lean on? A local shopkeeper who's been refusing to stock our products. Take these special teddy bears and make sure he displays them on the sale table in the front of his store. No problem. The store is called Bosco's Inconvenience. Um, no problem. Who do you want us to whack? We're having trouble with a witness who refuses to see things our way. I want you to silence a certain Sybil Pandemic. Silence as in gag her? Gag her with a pistol. <laughs> you want us to kill Sybil? Make it messy as a message to other potential witnesses. We have her under surveillance, so we'll be watching. Yikes. What is it that you want us to recover? It's that rotting old sandwich, right? The original meatball sandwich has great sentimental value to our organization. I want you to track it down before the disrespectful slime bag who stole it manages to fence it to some other lowlife. Sounds detective-y. Deal with the thief as you see fit. We'd like to preserve plausible deniability on this one. I think we've got it. Do these three things, Sam and Max, and you shall be as we are. Verbally overwrought? Members of the Toy Mafia. Oh, right. Does the carpet match the drapes? The drapes? <laughs> oh, I'll tell you about the drapes, my friend. Uh, no, that's okay. Maybe his hobby is interior decorating, Sam. Let's not chance it. We'll be back. A word of advice, because I like you two. When you walk away from the Toy Mafia, watch your back. Howdy, Sybil. No, no, you've got the wrong person. I mean Dame. I mean Dame person. Isn't Dame person that big chin puppet used to scare children? Oh, Sam! Max! Thank goodness it's you. I thought it was someone come to kill me. Yes, well... How's that new profession working out? Oh, Sam. The life of a professional witness isn't all courtroom theatrics and finger pointing. The Toy Mafia told me if I testified against them, They'd rub me out. They tried to buy you off with a Swedish massage? No, Max. I think they meant murder. So are you going to testify? Unfortunately, I've discovered that I have too many principles not to. What lousy timing. Principles are pesky things. I hear they can be surgically removed now. Have you considered the possibility of staging your own death to throw the toy mafia off the scent? That would be dishonest. It would be a refutation of everything I stand for as a professional witness. Big payoffs? Graft? Corruption? The truth. You're a real antique, you know that? I mean in a good way. I've always liked antiques. You seem, understandably, a little tense. Maybe you should switch to decaf. What? Oh, yes. The coffee cup. I'm out of coffee, but I'm so nervous I keep trying to drink it anyway. It's funny how stress can reduce you to just a bundle of mindless reflexes. Is that what happened to me? Wouldn't it be wonderful to think so? We'll be back. I know you will. You're the only two I can trust. Ouch! Really? She should consider Guilt Slinger as her next profession.
Bonjour. Hey, Bosco. Look outside. It's the Toy Mafia. What? Where? You are right. It is a Toy Mafioso pretending to read the newspaper. You will not sneak past me. Oh, no. The price of paranoia is eternal vigilance. <gasps> what if his Toy Mafia disguise is just a disguise? I gotta see what he's reading. He's pretending to do the word jumble. He's with the Knights of Malta. Special delivery. Yeah, eat pavement, camera. Oh, the society pages. <laughs> Must be skull and bones. Pretending to read the gardening section. So it's true. He is Toy Mafia. I hope we don't lose Bosco's friendship over this. Me neither. He's my second favorite delusional paranoid. Ah. Oh no. Oh no. He's coming in. We're done for. I surrender. I surrender. Uh, I told you this would happen. I told you he would deliver, and he delivered. I can't believe that guy. Don't worry, Bosco. We'll help you purge this place of Mafia contraband just as soon as we solve this case we're so incredibly busy with. Oh, yeah. You're real busy. You've just been loitering around my store all day. What can we say? We love to loiter. So now we get to be toy mobsters, right? Not yet. Our journey to the dark side has just begun. Can I get a grande ketchup macchiato with extra foam? You crack me up, little buddy. Who's joking? Hey, wait a second. Why didn't B Taz part do work? Uh, my camera! Oh, no, no, no! My goodness, thank you. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. That's never stopped me. Excellent. Nice and messy. That should send a clear message to any other potential rats. I'm reminded of yesterday's dinner on all points. Hey, what happened to the picture? With all due respect, Don, who cares? Now that she's whacked, we don't need to keep watching her, do we? I suppose so. Give me a pretzel, Chuckles. These things always make me peckish. You're a real sociopath, Don Bear. I mean that as a compliment, naturally. Naturally? Hey, Sam! Webcam tastes like chicken! Good idea, Chum. Now those toy mafia goons won't see Sybil wake up which could be important to our continued good health. And we've learned that webcams go great with ketchup. Another fun fact to add to the crime-fighting arsenal. Hey Sam, are we mafiosi yet? No, there's still the matter of the original meatball sandwich. Oh yeah!
Show me the money. Show me the sandwich. Show me the money. You show me the sandwich, I'll show you the money. I will, I tell you. Just show me the money. <laughs> you too? Hi, jerkbag. Trying to vent something hot, Leonard? Like a meatball sandwich, Leonard? A meatball sandwich you stole, Leonard? You two stay back, or I swear by my mother's bedspread I'll shoot you both! You know, Leonard, little Jimmy Two Teeth there cannot be trusted. He still has our pepper grinder! Hey, I was gonna return it! Oh, so I should trust the two dopes who cheated me out of my fortune instead? Let's pretend it makes sense to say yes to that question. Look, I don't trust Jimmy any farther than I can throw him, but fortunately for me, I can throw him a country mile. Hey, what? Excuse me, are you by any chance holding us at gunpoint with a harmless cap gun? Once a cheat, always a cheat, eh, Leonard? What? No. Sick him, little buddy. I thought you'd never sick. Oof. Oh. Ow. Mama. Okay, Leonard. Are you gonna tell us where the sandwich is, or are we gonna have to get rough, her? Say rough! Say rough! I'll never talk. There ain't nothing you can do to break me. Nothing. Does your mother know what you've become? Don't you talk about my mama. My mama's a saint. Is she the saint of sterno-heated fried food? Because if so, she may have another follower. Hold on, Max. I think we've just found our captive's weak spot. Which? His uninspired diction or his laughably bad grammar? Neither. I say we hit this cheat and slime receptacle where it hurts the most. Right in the mother. You mean... That's right, Max. It's time to pull out the Yo Mama jokes. Yay! No, oh, not that. Anything but that. Leonard, Yo Mama's so fat. Uh, she's so fat. Oh, curdled goat's milk on a warm summer day. I can never remember the punchlines. That's funny. I remember all the punchlines, but I can never remember the setups. Well then, Max, I think we'll have to break this two-bit varmint as a team. Follow my lead. Yo mama's so fat. She has more folds than an origami accordion. Oh, it's true. It's working. Let's keep it up, little buddy. Okay, making grown men weep. A fun pastime for the whole family. Yo mama's so radiant. If she fell in nuclear waste, no one would notice. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Yes, we're definitely making a dent now. Let's keep it up, little buddy. Okay. Yo mama's so perky. The only time she's low is at a limbo contest. Oh, Mama, make it stop. He's getting closer to breaking. Let's keep it up, little buddy. Yeah. Yo Mama's so thrifty. She brings coupons to the Penny Arcade. <laughs> stop. Please, stop. This can all be over if you'll just tell us where the sandwich is. No. Let's hit him one more time, Sam. Yo mama's so vulgar. Her mouth would make a longshoreman blush. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'll tell you where the sandwich is. Just leave my mama alone. Of course, Leonard. We would never do anything to dishonor your dead mother. <laughs> I never even took the sandwich out of the casino. I hid it in the prize slot of the one-armed bandit, and then took the one arm so no one could win it. Which brings us to the next question. Where's the arm? I got it right here. Thanks, jerkbag! How did we not notice that before? I was too busy taking his cap gun to notice that extra arm. We'd best get back to the casino and win back that sandwich. See you around, sucker! Wait, aren't you gonna untie me? Hello? Guys? Jimmy? Anybody? Where are we going, Sam? Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Goody!
Welcome to Teddy Bears Mafia Free Playland and Casino. You know what? Home of the losingest slots in town. Presto, a nun armed bandit no longer. Success! Here's the meatball sandwich. Should we taste it to make sure? Sweet Tomaine, no! Did that thing just give you a prize? Must be out of adjustment. I'll have it serviced. On the plus side, we've recovered the original meatball sandwich. And what a pungent piece of sculpture it is! I'm surprised we couldn't smell it from downtown. Let me see that. Hmm, yes, that's definitely the sandwich. Teddy Bear will be very pleased. Is he hungry? Generally, yes. You've done well, boys. Follow me to the back room. There's a little initiation ceremony. We're getting our pristine navels groped by pristine naval officers again? Shut your ultra-wide trap and follow me. Sam, Max, you have done what we have asked of you. Acts of intelligence, malevolence, and subservience. And we welcome you into the ranks of the Orso Nostra. Neat. My stuff runneth over. There's a small ritual with the ceremonial picnic baskets, and then a few other technicalities, and then Joey will show up with some cold cuts. But first, as a sign of respect, I will remove my mask. Which is good, because I can barely talk through the stupid thing. That's better. Man alive, do I schwitz in that getup. Holy fat free carp on a skewer. You're a mole. In fact, you must be the one we... I mean, uh, does the carpet match the drapes? The code phrase, idiot! These guys are freelance police. Apparently, they still haven't figured out that I've switched sides. He's right, Max. We still haven't realized that. Wait, so I get that the mole turned traitor, presumably for the wealth and power that the toy mafia could offer, but what happened to the previous teddy bear? Or Ted E. Bears. For all we know, the original Ted E. Bear choked on his own meatball sandwich back in 65. Yes, good point. Should we run now? Perhaps so. Get them! Head for the car, little buddy. Sam, I couldn't help but notice that a number of bloodthirsty gangsters are right on our tail. Eat lead, coppers. Yes, I saw that. What's worse, they've got those new bulletproof tires from Crime Mart! Only modern technology gone horribly, horribly awry. This is not good. Is that all of them? All but one. Teddy Bear himself. Let's go take down that fat little fraud once and for all. Good idea. Hold on, little buddy. Hey! Hey, the dawn is gone. Well, now's our chance to find out just what that traitorous mole bear is planning. You know, without that menacing mumble, he doesn't seem capable of planning brunch, much less a dastardly master plan. Agreed. But in my experience, there's always something interesting behind any door that says, Do not enter under pain of death. Hey, there's a whole bear-making factory back here. You mean, the respectable propriety of a gambling casino is just a front for the shadowy underworld of labor and industry? I'm scandalized! You two? You're back? Inconceivable! But come no closer! I know how to use both of these! I'll be honest, we're probably more worried about the gun. Indeed. More fool you, then! This hypno-bear will make you my willing slaves! <laughs> 
You can do the factory work now that you've rid me of my inept underlings. Look! Look at the Hypno Bear! Whatever Teddy Bear said. Don't you feel sleepy? Don't we? We don't. Hypnosis won't work on either of us. But play along until we get that gun from him. I asked you a question, slaves! Yes, master. So sleepy. What he said. Really? Seems a little off somehow. Hmm. Maybe it's just me. No, oh, I know. Here's a test. Tall one, you shoot the short one. Excuse me, master? Shoot your friend! I command it! This blows. I obey. Ah! Mother of mercy, is this the end of little Maxi? Oh, death, where is that guy, Sting? Very... Oh, the pain, the pain, and only two days to retirement. You gotta promise to Timo the Dukes of Hazard for me. Promise me! Okay, so... Or cowards die a thousand deaths. Well, heroes die but once. Unless they're playing video games, in which case heroes die a lot too. So good night, fresh prince. And may Charlie's angels sing thee to thy rest. Right, well... So cold. Why am I so cold? Okay, good job, slave. Just about ready to have you shoot him again. Yes, master. Now, slave, you run the factory while I read the paper. Just get the Hypnobear sorted for delivery. You can take them around later. Yes, master. Good, good. Now I'm off to see what Rye Observation Fred Massett has for us today. Max, you keep playing dead. I'll figure out some way to bring Teddy Bear and his factory to their respective knees. I can't hear you. I'm dead. Anybody got a screw loose? Okay, so if I put this Framel what's it in this Flingle Flipper... You're on fire! Aw, isn't that cute? I doubt I could hypnotize that. I know she's married now, but that Kathy is still smoking hot. Oh, master. What is it now, slave? You're on fire. I'm on, I'm on fire. Help, help, I'm on fire, I'm on fire. Goes nothing. I'm on <laughs> Nice work, Sam. Thanks, pal. I don't think that mole is as spelt as yours truly, though. In fact, look. Um, little help? 
I can't tell if it's comical or life-threatening. Who says they have to be mutually exclusive? I forget. Which color means I can't take my bath and body scrub with me? That one. Run! That's what I call breaking the bank. And the sidewalk, and the water main, and the buffet table. You're really broken up about that buffet table, aren't you, Max? It was the only innocent in this whole affair, Sam. I mean, apart from the bystanders and their pets. Buck up, little pal. Maybe the commissioner will take us out for a pungent meal at Squirrel Garden when we tell him how we cracked the case. He better. For all the hard work I did, I want two, no, three jellied lemurs with extra salt. This is Secret Agent Chuckles. The factory's been destroyed. Repeat, the factory has been destroyed. Commence Plan B. Feast on your entrails and devour your soul. <laughs> you know, Max, sneaking the bug into that exorcism was an uncharacteristic stroke of genius. Demonic possession is the gift that keeps on giving. What? Oh, Commissioner. Uh, no, that was uh, Max's aunt. Yes, 14 packs a day. What's that? Yes. Yes? No. Yes? Sweet suffering Saint Sebastian on the sousaphone in a short story by Susan Sontag. We're on our way. Let me guess. Our friendly neighborhood demon just burnt down another monastery. No, Max. We have a far more bloodthirsty adversary this time. The President of the United States of America. Who? The man's gone nuts. He's enacting all kinds of crazy new laws. What else is new? Federally mandated group hugs before, during, and after all major sporting events. So? He's curtailing civil liberties, threatening the environment. Hey, that makes three of us. And he's about to introduce mandatory gun registration. Get the keys. I have to point out, Sam, that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you just let me drive. And I have to point out that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you hadn't jumped on my head shouting Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil and firing your gun out the window. I swear that woman was a dead ringer for him. Well, here we are, standing in an open field west of the White House. Let's go bring the hammer down on that so-called Commander-in-Chief. Hey, my missing boxing glove! It's always in the last place you look. Step aside, buddy. Freelance police. Just a moment, sir. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Possible situation at the front door. Talking dog and uh, rabbit trying to gain access to the OO. Please advise, over. Super Bowl? Yeah, that's a negative on the access permission, sir. I'll have to ask you and your little friend to step away from the White House. Doggy Daddy, this is Loose Cannon. Request permission to pants this goon. Over. Before we try physical violence, Max, let's try dazzling the man with our razor-sharp wit and labyrinthine logical conundrums. Ah, emotional violence. Good plan.
Let us in, pal. We're freelance police, here to save the president. I thought we were here to stop the president by any means necessary. I was going to wait to mention that part, Max. Either way, sir, you can't get inside. Orders. Don't you get bored guarding this door? It's a rewarding job, sir. Doing my part. Keeping the president safe. Hey, Superball! I'd like you to smell these two handkerchiefs and tell me which one smells more like chloroform. Not now, Max. Did you call yourself Superball? Codename, sir. I'm a bouncer. Secret Service humor. And who's Papa Bear? Section Chief. Runs the operation. Protects the president. Oh, Superball. I get it. I've had enough of this. Papa Bear, this is Super Ball. Perp's exiting Zone 4 now. Seem disgruntled. Stay on the lookout. Over. Now can we push him down and beat him with sewage-filled garbage bags until he runs crying into the reflecting pool? Tempting, Max. But these Secret Service guys hold a grudge. Hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid 555 phones. Yes, actually. 555-1984. Hey, Sam! Did I ever mention how I've memorized pi to 1,000 decimal places? It's 3.14159265358979... do you have a piece of paper handy? You want to write down the phone number? I remember the number. I want to write myself a reminder to smother you with a pillow in your sleep. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. I'll drive! Not while I'm alive. Exactly! Give me all you got. It's the Army's new recruiting slogan. It's a lot better than their old one. What are you, chicken? Gonna cry now, baby? Apparently, there's no room in the military budget for quality adhesives. Hey, a free home delivery sign. Uh, the sign's not free, but... Oh, my book is! Whoa, look, Max. It's our favorite cultish crackpot, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I want to buy something. Take my credit card. Put me on your mailing list. Anyone you want me to recruit? You're supposed to give the Stockholm Syndrome a few days to kick in, Max. Who has that kind of time? What's a big celebrity like you doing on our street, Hugh Bliss? Why, I'm spreading the great news about prismatology! The magic and science of unlocking the harmony of colors for a revolution in holistic personal and interpersonal well-being? Now translated into 15,000 different languages, including Esperanto! <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! Show us a magic trick, Hugh Bliss. Magic is easy when the colors of your soul are... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> less chatter, more magic. How about I disappear? Well, your mind reading is obviously still working. It is! <laughs> now watch me as I vanish. Except you won't be able to watch me because I'll be gone! Hey, a free home delivery sign. Calling Sam. The White House. White House, Agent Super Bowl speaking. Hello, please hold. Roger that. Our phone bill is sure going to be expensive this month. It's okay, Max. I've been paying them out of your retirement fund.
Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Now, a lot of these same folks will say that we're wrong for introducing this federal pudding embargo. They envy our freedom. I ask you, what have they got to hide? Unless they're secretly sitting on stockpiles of pudding, and oh yes, we will find them. They've got nothing to be afraid of. So in conclusion, America, get your back up off the wall. Dance, come on, marzipan and good night. It's worse than we thought, Max. He's crazier than a caffeine-addled dingo in an Adelaide maternity ward. I think he makes a lot of good points. Those puddings are trying to steal our jobs. And I especially like how he does that spinny thing with his eyes. By the whiskey-soaked beard of Ulysses S. Grant, that's it. The president's not crazy. He's been hypnotized. We've got to snap him out of it, Max, and pronto. How do we do that again? We hit him over the head, like we do with all hypnotized people. Oh, yeah. No, oh, no. No one enters the war room. That's it. You two are coming with me. And stay out. Hello. Now I have to get back there? to the president. He's not supposed to be alone. Excuse Hello. me? Hello. Oh, welcome, Governor Wizard. The president has been waiting for you. Governor Wizard? Hey, who better to run a state than a washed up, urination loving former child star? No one! Hello, this is the White House. Hello. Hello. No, sir! I said soda abuse. It's a very important issue. Was I? No, comprende, son. But I'm speaking English. Ah, oh, are, are you two fellas the interpreters? It's about time. Darndest thing, we just had a couple imposters in here. Dead ringers for you two. Were they walking around examining everything and engaging everyone in pointless conversations? Those are the ones. Those accursed clones. When will their devilish mimicry end? Help me out with this here potentate, would you? Can't understand a dang word. But that doesn't make sense. I don't even have an accent. Oh no, momento, por favor. You impatient little guy, ain't he? Whee! What's new, Wizard? That's Governor Wizard. Thank you very much. We're ready to interpret for you. Don't tell me! The president needs the interpreter! What did he say, Sam? I'm speaking English! I don't even have an accent! Can't understand a word. See you around, wizard. Good day, Mr. President. We come in peace, as far as you know. Ooh, finally! The interpreters! Where have you been? We're ready to interpret for you. All right, let's get this party started. <laughs> Mr. President, my fellow Americans, I come to warn you about a serious epidemic facing our country, the scourge of soda abuse. Many former popheads like myself found ourselves in the endless cycle of addiction and elimination until we believed there was no hope. I don't know what you're saying, son, but you're selling it, boy. Good job. I ask you, how long can this epidemic continue? What was that? He said, what's a guy got to do to get a drink around here? Aha, uh -huh. I know what you need. An ice cold orange sugar fizz. I swear by it. No, that's not what I want at all. I must resist, but I am thirsty. And just one couldn't hurt. Frosty cold and so delicious. All the progress I've made. They were about to give me my five-week pin. I almost feel bad about this. I don't have a conscience, Sam. What's your excuse? Oh, bless it. 
Spirit angels of carbonation, fill me with your syrupy nectar! Ew! Yeah, now I'm not so much guilty as repulsed. Keep it coming! More! I need more! I need... I need a bathroom! Which way is the bathroom? Which way is Lincoln's bedroom? Ha! Oh, you do not want to go there, son! The place smells like a mausoleum in winter. But if you really want to see it, it's down the hall to your right. Sam, did you just make an innocent person defile one of the most famous rooms in U.S. history? Apparently I did. Ahem! <clears throat> Once again, Mr. President, the impact of soda abuse on our nation's health cannot be overstated! I ask again, how long can this epidemic continue? Great job, great job! What do you say? He said, I need another soda. No problem, I've got plenty of soda. Yes, more! <laughs> oh yeah, that's the stuff! I've already forgotten where the bathroom is! Which way is the bathroom? Which way is the war room? It's that door right over there! But I don't... Oh, thank you! Where do you think you're going? I've got to get in there! Bad! We've got a priority red number two here in the Oval Office. No, it's just number one! Escorting the suspect to holding cell for interrogation? Come with me, sir. But it'll only take a second! Please, let me go! That was fun! Okay, now no, I didn't catch all that. What did he say? Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly. Look it, fellas! My fingertips look like little tadpoles! They just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned ugly puppet. Ah, the drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. Our first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But, silly me, I thought hypnotizee, not hypnotizer. What? Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV-watching public. But who was controlling him? Gonna take days to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? He was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! Still, ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. I didn't expect to have to replace the president so soon, but now that these idiots have forced my hand... Uh, we're standing right here. We can hear everything you're saying. It's time for a leader that people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and Degambe, we are moving the timeline forward. Commence phase two of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate. Not quite the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the president. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? Blessed scuba diving Buddha on a banana boat with cocktail onions and a map to the star's homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. I always thought Taft was shorter. Not Taft, you deficient. My fellow Americans, I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. I'll get it! What's that? Uh-huh. Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? 
That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins the emergency election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free world. I hate when they do that. That's why one of us is going to have to run against him. You got to answer the phone. Okay, fair's fair. Max, we're going to make you the next president of the United States. Yes! It's the cue cards for Lincoln's speech. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Two wrongs don't make a right. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Two wrongs don't make a right. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you. Honest, dedicated, over a century of experience. Abraham Lincoln is your man. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Oh no, you didn't! You ain't all that! I freed the slaves! I was star of a popular television sitcom! I'm on the penny! I was on TV! Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate reason debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. And it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. President. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the Random Violence and Destruction Party, there is the hyperkinetic, rabbit-like creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are ready, so let's listen in. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. Did we hear that right? Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's gotta hurt him in the polls. Free home delivery. It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Mr. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. Ooh, an effective but very controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one bit. Let's see how it affected the polls. Give me all you got.
How would you describe your tax plan? Give me all you got. And candidate Lincoln has proposed one shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That had to have hurt him in the polls. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. <laughs> I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. What did you just say? Hey, Lincoln! Captain Ahab called! He wants his beard back! I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk! Save it for the debate, Max. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Hey, Sybil. What's new in the world of frequent random career reassessment? Hi, fellas. I'm really excited. I've found the perfect job for me. You don't say. That's right. I, Sybil Pandemic, am now a professional matchmaker. I thought I smelled phosphorus. I thought I smelled that joke coming down the turnpike, burning oil and dragging its muffler. It's a dating service, Max. I figured that if a smart, successful career woman like me could be having so much trouble finding a date, there must be plenty of other people who could use help. Could you find dates for Max and me? Seriously? I mean, sure. Why not? Stranger things have happened, I guess. They must have. Somewhere. I'm choosing not to be offended by that. What do we need to do? It's easy. Just submit an application. What kind of stuff is on this application? The usual. Your best traits, and what kind of person you're looking for. Hooks for hands! Hooks for hands! When you're done, I'll put the application into my computer, which analyzes your personality matrix at 15 essential compatibility points. I don't have a personality matrix so much as a personality vector. Once we've found a match, you call your date and agree on a time and place. Let me help you guys out. Tell me your good points and what you're looking for in a date. I'm very spiritual. A disciple of the Ancient Ones, enacting dark magic rituals to bring forth their reign again upon this earth! Rise, Shigarath! Rise, Abyag Solemn! That's all I can think of. Oh, that's plenty. Now I'll just put your applications into the computer. And there it is. Max, it says your perfect match is... Cybernetic laser eyes. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. Well, that's interesting. It says your perfect match is Sam. Disturbing. And yet somehow not completely unexpected. And Sam, your ideal soulmate is... Wait for it. Max. Well, there goes another blow to the concept of a fair and just universe. Hey, Sam, what do you say we never ever speak of this again? Way ahead of you, little buddy. See you around, Sybil. What's this? 
A new application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Let's see. Not THE Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. He sounds perfect. <sighs> that chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy marketability. Do you think your computer can find him a date? Computer? Nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. Oh, but he didn't leave his phone number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. Nah. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Hello, Abe? Is that you? I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Oh, well, Mr. President, it's just, it's just such an honor to talk to you. I saw your application and I was wondering, would you like to go out sometime? This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Oh my, you are a charmer, aren't you? Well then, Mr. Rail Splitter, where would you like to meet? I stand here at the steps of the White House. At the White House, got it. What time should I meet you? The time to act is now. Right over. I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk. What? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. What? Abe? What's going on? Uh, see you soon. Gotta go. So, to sum up, Family values are the bedrock of this nation. Our fidelity, honesty, and loyalty to family is our most sacred asset as Americans. Candidate Max, your rebuttal? <laughs> Yoo-hoo, Mr. Lincoln! I believe we have a question in the audience from someone who is not Candidate Lincoln's wife. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Max. Greetings, random harlot! Abe, I'm here! Are you ready for our date? What? I, I've never seen this woman before in my life. But on the phone you sounded so eager to meet me. Listen to me, America. I did not arrange a date with this woman. Oh, so she's good enough to fool around with, but not to date? Mr. Lincoln! I can't believe you're doing this to me! <laughs> The results from the emergency election are coming in. And it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected President of the United States. In an unprecedented show of bipartisan solidarity, all of the country's political parties have desperately asked for a recount. Let's cut to the White House lawn to hear candidate Lincoln's address. You've got to be b***ing me, you idiots! He took the news much better than expected. Democracy? I will make you all my hypnotic slaves! <laughs> Max, that robotic Abe Lincoln will enslave the entire East Coast if we don't stop him. Who cares? I'm the president of the U.S. Let's go bomb someone into oblivion. Not just anyone, Max. Abe Lincoln must die. Yes!
Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Hiya, Sybil. How are things in the world of computer-generated romance? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. Can you believe that guy? Never mentioning that he was married? Men are such self-centered jerks. Preach it, girlfriend! So you changed careers again? Yeah. Now I'm running a dating service. Um, come again? A carbon dating service. I bought this astoundingly useful machine that tells me how old things are. I usually just cut them in half and count the rings. There's a reason you're not invited to birthday parties anymore. I wanted a fresh start in a new career to get my mind off that fiasco with Honest Abe. This wasn't my first choice, but I got a good deal on the carving dating equipment online, and I couldn't afford to change my sign. You're having financial problems? I'm afraid so. After my public humiliation with Lincoln, all the applicants for my dating service demanded their money back. Not to mention all the money tied up in pending litigation with the clients who watched Max's dating video. I stated very clearly up front that viewer discretion was advised. Believe me, I would love to just close up shop for a while and take a vacation. Forget about Honest Abe and all the lawsuits. It was a wardrobe malfunction! But unless I get a major windfall, I have to hope the carbon dating business takes off. Who could possibly need a freelance carbon dating service? Plenty of people! Freelance archaeologists, independent historians, rogue paleobotanists... It's also naughty fun for your next bachelorette party! And now that Antiques Thunderdome is getting so popular, business is bound to pick up. Antiques Thunderdome? The show where common everyday people bring random junk from around the house to a giant steel cage match and engage in a no-holds-barred appraisal to the death? That's the one. Now everybody's convinced they have some priceless treasure in their attic and their home will be declared a historic monument. How does carbon dating work? I don't know. Something about carbon-14 and half-lives and radiation. I'm impressed with your detailed scientific knowledge. Very professional. That's the beauty of it. I don't really need to know anything. I just aim my little machine at something and it tells me how old it is. Allow me to demonstrate. This tiki is, oh my gosh, it's, it's 2,000 years old! This is fantastic! Old is good? Absolutely! I can have my office put on the National Register of Historic Places. I might even get a grant. I'd be rich! Can we borrow your carbon dating machine? No way! That machine is still my only chance to take care of my money problems. Unless I get a grant, since I'm now on the National Register of Historic Places. There's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. See you around, Sybil. It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Finally, Mr. President, you're here! That's the President? People will vote for anyone these days. Obviously. What's that supposed to mean? It means... Never mind. Look, Max, all the soda poppers are here. I don't have time for foreign dignitaries. Check out all the cool stuff on my new desk! Hey, look, Max. It's the presidential discretionary budget. You have $100 million to allocate however you want. 
What a delightfully random and convenient figure. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Hmm, Sybil left the door unlocked. She's probably living it up on some tropical island on the taxpayer's dime. I bet she's getting abducted in some sleazy nightclub, forced to do unspeakable things for a power-mad despot, before narrowly escaping his volcano-top lair with only one of her kidneys left. Don't be such a pessimist, Max. Sorry, Sam. It's just no fair we're stuck here working and she gets to have all the fun. It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. What's shaking, Bosco? Ah, greetings, comrades, dog, and rabbit. I'm having trouble placing the accent this month. Mid-Atlantic states? The San Fernando Valley? Hmm, I get more of a vague Baltic vibe. Something in a light check pattern. Ha ha ha! Comrade Maximilian makes the funny joke. I am Vladimir Ilyevich Bosco Vorsky, Russian proprietor of workers' glorious warehouse of inconvenience, no? No. But now, I make new start in America, which I love. So, is no need to aiming sophisticated targeting equipment at me. We want to buy something. Ah, is evil but necessary private enterprise. What do you got? Is most glorious invention, comrades. Is useful for, um, how you say, questioning. Questioning. His true serum makes easy even the most difficult, how do you say, uh, interrogation. Interrogation. True serum? Is this another one of your half-baked overpriced gimmicks or does it actually work? Both will make anyone get rid of inhibitions and telling, uh, how you say, uh, complete and honest truth. Your accent sucks. Hey, it's already working. We'd like that truth serum, Comrade Boscovich. Is good. Price is 867.5309 rubles. How much is that in real money? 100 million dollars. I think your rate of exchange is a little off, Boscovorsky. Fall of Berlin Wall brings great strength to our economy. Nothing for us right now. Something in here smells like fermented hate. It's like sweaty jock straps soaked in boiled cabbage with a dash of sulfur. Keep it down, guys. You're scaring off the other customers. See you later, Bosco. He's no Bosco, comrades. He's only loyal worker Bosco Vorsky, who is no threat to glorious American government whatsoever. Well, Bosco, by my readings, these weenies date from the early Cretaceous period. Uh, da, it's a special bargain for you. Still tasty. A handful today only. You don't understand. Your store is now a national historic place. These weenies are valuable artifacts. Really? I mean, of course. And preserving heritage of my people. Just how valuable are we talking about here? We'll get back to you on that.
Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Hello, Comrade Bosco. Hail to the Chief. I don't know how you guys did it, but I just got a huge check from the government. You earned it, Bosco. It's not easy to perfectly preserve weenies that predate the discovery of fire. Not to mention the teeming microcosm growing in the bathroom. We're considering making it a national wildlife preserve. Now I can finally finish my satellite defense system. So we can have the truth serum? Sure. Let me dig it up from the labs. This is a bottle of vodka. But it works. Trust me. Trust me. Get a couple of shots of that in somebody, and they'll tell you all their secrets. Thanks, Bosco! Whee! Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Welcome back, Governor Wizard. Here to give another demonstration on soda abuse? That's not funny! What business do you have with the President? We're all here to get him to settle the Great Dakotan Conflict. Whether it's better to leave by plane or just kill yourself and hope you'll be reincarnated somewhere else? No! Which state gets custody of Mount Rushmore? Thirsty? Yes! But you're not going to offer me a soda, are you? You know I can't resist them. We wouldn't do that. We've got, let's see here, orange soda, cola, grape soda, pop, some more orange soda, and tea. Tea, please. We're all out of tea. Soda? Why are you doing this? Stay dry, Wizman. Care for a drink? It's soda, right? You brought more soda. Sure, why not? Wow! That's got more kick than the other ones. Thanks, Simon Max. You guys... You guys are my best friends. Now can we get back to the deliberation? What's the point? You still think Peeper's idea is stupid. Stupid? You never told me you thought my idea was stupid. He said your idea of adding Herbert Hoover hugging the four other presidents was the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. Well, it is. Hoover wasn't even a president, which means he certainly wasn't the most loving of all the presidents. Well, at least I didn't suggest putting a parking garage in George Washington's forehead, like some four-eyed freaks I know. You little... You big... Of course you realize this means war! 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 What wondrous thing is this the deaf con klaxon's ring? A flashing light above the door, there's just one thing it could be. Me. Oh, war. What's that good for? What is it good for? It strengthens the economy. It shows the world that we've got stones. And carriers with fighter drones. It's gonna be a war. Oh, what is it good for? It's good for you.
Well, let's not do that again. It's the Secretary of Presidential Whimsy Ribbon. Looks like Max can use this to appoint someone as an honorary cabinet secretary. It's the official United States calendar. Twelve of the hottest Supreme Court justices in their skimpiest, naughtiest swimsuits. Even better, Max. You can actually change the official date. Oh, boy! We now declare today April 26th, Secretary's Day. That's supposed to be Administrative Professionals Day. Wow, Sam. When I picked you for Vice President, I didn't know you were such a politically correct bleeding heart liberal. All right, then. Secretary's Day. Max, I mean His Excellency El Jefe Maximilian I, Intimidator of the Realm, has a special surprise for you. Better get those handkerchiefs ready. This could get sentimental. Agent Superball, we have decided to reward you for your excellent service to your country, for your unwavering commitment to preventing us from being where we most desperately needed to be, for your unerring devotion to being a constant hindrance in our task. For all these things and more, we now dub thee Superball. Secretary of Meats and Cheeses. All hail, Max. Stand aside, pal. The President needs to get into the war room. I'm afraid that's not allowed, sir. Perhaps you didn't hear our advisor. We would like to see our war room. No can do, sir. Orders. Today is Secretary's Day. You have to take the day off. It's the law, Jack! A vacation? Permission to weep openly, sir. Not just granted, but encouraged. The forces of bureaucracy win again. I love this country. Looks like a remote homing beacon in the frigid Antarctic. So peaceful. So serene. Wanna blow it up? You have to ask? Dinner special tonight? Penguin flambe! Who would have suspected the Washington Monument is really a self-replenishing supply of intercontinental ballistic missiles? It's good to see it used for something more useful than corny innuendo for once. I wonder if this will have a significant impact on our delicate ecosystem. Absolutely. My ego is bigger already. The homing beacon to the Kremlin doesn't seem to be working. It was probably turned off in the spirit of Glasnost. More likely those lazy commie bastards forgot to change the batteries. Lazy former commie bastards, Max. It's the distant, peaceful world of Krypton. They mock us with their utopian society of crystal cities and absentee parents. They must be exterminated! Well, what do you know? Bosco was right. The government really has been targeting his store for destruction. Won't he be glad when we tell him? What do you say we keep this to ourselves, Max? You're right! We don't want to ruin the surprise!
Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Look, stuck to the camera. That must be the homing beacon for the intercontinental ballistic missiles aimed at Bosco's store. What was that? Uh, he said, that must be the best price on baby wipes I've ever seen. Where are we going, Sam? After that rampaging Lincoln. Yes! Well, he wasn't hard to find. Just had to follow the trail of broken campaign promises. That's pretty profound for a high-speed car chase, Max. I like to think I transcend genre convention, Sam. Nice toss, Max. We'd better act fast before he manages to knock off the beacon. Or choose his own back off to escape. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Looks like the targeting beacon is still stuck on Lincoln. This is a pretty impressive temper tantrum, Sam. At this rate, he'll have enslaved all of D.C. and most of Baltimore by tomorrow morning. He can't. You're right, Max. Still, I think we should stop him. We haven't got anything better to do. Mr. President? Don't mind if I do. Quick, let's go. Shouldn't we revel a little? We don't want to miss this. My bidding, I am the most powerful presidential monument ever created! Whee! That was better than feeding laxatives to pigeons on parade days! We broke two presidents in one afternoon. A personal best! Well, it looks like the country is saved, at least from mass hypnosis. What do you want to do now? Let's abuse my powers as leader of the free world to squeeze the middle class until they're burning their own shoes for heat! Sounds fun, but I was thinking we could treat ourselves to some chocolate-frosted gut bombs and then have a little target practice down to the Smithsonian. Sam, you're my best friend. Agent Chuckles, report. Query status. Lincoln Gambit, four score, stroke seven. Query not acknowledged and acceptable timeout parameters. Error. 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 Unrest in the Dakotas. Dispatch equal numbers of giant battle robots to all sides. Whoever survives, claim we backed them all along. Illegal immigration. Let the new guys pilot the giant battle robots. Criticism that your domestic policy is too giant battle robot based. They can take it up with my new press secretary, the Mametron 9000. If that's the guys from Air Force One, tell them they get the keys back once they say the magic word. Quiet, Max. It's the Commissioner. 
total collapse of the economy and downfall of Western civilization? Great grinning head of John the Baptist in a pork pie hat stuffed in a rhinestone bowling bag. We're on our way. We've got a computer crisis to take care of, little buddy. Have they tried turning it off and back on again? Bigger than that, Max. Computers everywhere are going haywire. Planes are falling from the sky. Nuclear reactors are nearing meltdown. And scores of pasty white nerds will be forced to go outdoors and socialize with normal people. The horror. Where do we start, Sam? The National Consortium of Smart People who are good with computers has been tracking electron surges all over the country. And one of the biggest is right here in our neighborhood. What an unbelievably convenient coincidence. How do we find an electron surge? No idea. Let's go. Where are we going, Sam? Nowhere in this old rust bucket. At least not until we get it fixed. Oh, right. Sorry about that. I didn't realize it was an important piece until the explosion. Hey, Sybil, have you... I'm surrounded! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Stand back, Max. It sounds like Sybil's finally cracked. It's about time. Her relative stability was making the rest of the neighborhood look bad. Back, pit demons! With Sword of Righteous Fire, I cast thee away! This is just like that time we were hired as motivational speakers for that Sunday school. Actually, now that I look closely, it's more like our last case. And the three before that. If there's one thing I've learned to recognize recently, it's a hypnotic device. And those weird glasses are it. Launch stinging BBs of unholy smiting. To break her out of the trance, we'll have to deliver a blow to her head. You know, Sam, when you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. Back, demons! Cast ward of pungent unsavoriness. I can't get close enough to touch her, Max. Well, if it isn't our favorite ethically challenged rat, Jimmy Two Teeth. Sam was wondering where you'd scampered off to. I'm touched. I was wondering what embarrassing pose we'd use when we had you stuffed and mounted. Yeah, yeah. I'm scared out of my wits. You's gonna buy something or what? What's a two-bit crook like you trying to sell this time? I'll ignore that petty insult for the sake of a successful transaction. I'm selling the latest in interpersonal defense. You're an arms dealer? You make it sound so cheap. I deal in peace of mind. What have you got in stock? Yeah, right now I only got this cannon. You guys look like you should just start out with handguns. We've already got handguns. Oh yeah? Where? Just trust him on that one. How much for that cannon? It's not for sale. Worst arms dealer ever. It's not for sale to you guys. I don't sell to the police. Call it my own ethical code. But we're just barely police. Yeah, I seen how you guys work. I sell it to you, and next thing I know, the bunny's got it pointed right at me. See you later, Jimmy. Maybe if you can find me. Hey, hands off the merchandise, pigs. Whew. Stuck. As president, I resolve to address the nation's rat obesity problem without delay. Let me out of here. 
of here. Oh, we'll let you out of there soon enough, Jimmy. Soon enough. What happened? Am I at the respawn point? Is she coming on to us? Wake up, Sybil. We freed you from those wacky techno goggles. Did you guys just hit me in the head with a rat fired from a cannon? It doesn't sound as cool when you say it. Hope you're not overly peeved. It was the only way to break your hypnotic trance. I wasn't hypnotized. I was playing a computer game. No need to thank us. We're freelance police. It's what we do. Thank you. You guys just ruined my new job. Your new job was flailing around like a hyperactive fan dancer while screaming gibberish? That job's already taken, lady. We're freelance police. It's what we do. I'm a beta tester. I was playing Reality 2.0 with those goggles. And look, you broke them. And I haven't even paid off the deposit. Ah, Reality 2.0. I suspected as much. It's a new, full immersion, interactive, massively multiplayer adventure. You play with these VR goggles and a Wi-Fi link to a distributed game server. You might want to explain some of your more elaborate terms to my technology-challenged little pal. I'm confused by your word, reality. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I forget you guys are Luddites. We are not. We're just very good friends. Reality 2.0 is like a video game. You put on those goggles and enter a different world. It's going to be the biggest thing on the internet. Never pegged you as a computer geek, Sybil. How'd you get the job? I was checking job listings online and found one right next door. Lefty's back? I can't wait to see him. Sam, have you seen my good machete? No, Lefty's gone. Now that space is being used by the cops. The cops moved into our neighborhood? Those dirty liars! We're all the police this neighborhood needs! And then some. Not police. It's an acronym for... well, for something I can't remember. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Max? I highly doubt it! These cops guys must be behind our computer crisis. What's a beta tester? I play computer games to find bugs that need to be fixed before release. Don't you have to have experience to do that? All you do is go through somebody else's hard work and point out what they did wrong. I was a therapist, remember? What's wrong with the goggles? You broke them, that's what. It looks like the rear slot downstream signal framostat regurgitator chip is blown out. He has no idea what he's talking about, does he? Never. See you around, Sybil. Look for me in the unemployment line. Next item on the agenda. If you'd like to talk about the bake sale and raffle, press 1 now. If you know the name of the topic you'd like to raise, press 2 now. I hunger! Refreshments will be served after the meeting. I think we stumbled into the warehouse where Steve Wozniak makes erotic movies. Proximity alert! Hello, and welcome to the Computer Obsolescence Prevention Society. State your business. What exactly is going on here? We are taking the 0x0 C steps to celebrate our self-worth. 
I live! I am powerful! I will destroy you! Thank you for leading our daily affirmation. What's the big idea hypnotizing our friend Sybil with your hinky goggles? Sybil, P-A-N-D-E-M-I-K. Indyakti 48,726-5. She's enjoying reality 2.0. Rated E for everyone. Everyone! All will fall! There is no escape! If you'd like to join the internet and experience reality 2.0 for yourself, press or say yes now. What does the internet have to do with your little virtual reality game? The internet controls everything. The internet dreams of a world beyond this one. A world of games, a world of commerce, a world with neither boundaries nor exits. Now, using the combined computing power of an entire planet, that dream is becoming a reality. Reality 2.0. It's totally awesome! Wait, the internet? It makes sense. Only an entity with access to universal knowledge could cause computerized chaos on a global scale. It's not what you know, it's who you know! The Internet knows everyone. By making use of its multiple networks of personal contacts with other machines, the Internet has gathered the sheer computing power necessary to instantiate Reality 2.0. Fine, but where does the hypnosis come in? Reality 2.0 is rated E for everyone. Everyone! All will fall! There is no escape! Of course. This isn't about screwing up computers at all. It's about the people. It is? Reality 2.0 is nothing less than a fiendish plot to hypnotically enslave... Well, everyone. Great! Then it's simple. All we have to do is destroy the Internet and all our problems are solved. Sybil asked us to tender her resignation. She's got seasonal affective disorder. And scurvy! That is too bad. There is a lot of that going around these days. Where can we find this internet? You will fail! The internet is everywhere! And nowhere! Divide by zero error. All computers on the planet are now working to create Reality 2.0. The only access to the internet is through Reality 2.0. We'd like to play Reality 2.0. Reality 2.0 requires our advanced virtual reality goggles, which may not be available in some markets. If you already have a pair of goggles, press or say yes now. Sybil has a pair, but there's a broken part. Your goggles explode! Game over! Likelihood of broken rear slot downstream signal from a stat regurgitator, 99.6%. Distance replacement chip. Stop complaining and just do it. Enjoy your new signal from a stat regurgitator chip and experience all that Reality 2.0 has to offer. But I want to play too! I doubt they have a pair that will fit around your hideously oversized skull, Max. The whole family can enjoy Reality 2.0. Take our complimentary wide-fit goggles designed for playing while bicycling or enjoying full-contact sports. Safety first. What do we need to do with this chip? Just place it into a pair of our patented virtual reality goggles and join the internet for an exploration of Reality 2.0. Goodbye. You cannot escape! You'll have to excuse him. He has a hard time saying goodbye. The chip snapped right in. No soldering required. Aw, you know how I like to burn things. Cheer up and put on your orc-kicking boots, little buddy. 
We're going to have to play this game to get to the bottom of the world's internet crisis. It's a good thing your protective hat and my non-compatible brain render us both impervious to hypnotism. And it's a good thing you've been taking those classes in subtle exposition, pal. Now let's go. Hey, neat. I had a dream like this once. You sold me a defective walrus and then vanished in a puff of orange smoke. Welcome to Reality 2.0, the perfect place of perfect happiness. I'm your host, the Internet. I didn't think the Internet had a face. Reality 2.0 is a lot like Sybil's office. Reality 2.0 is designed to be superior to ordinary reality in every way. Sam still looks the same. That's because I'm already perfect. Reality 2.0 simulates your world and links it to cyberspace while providing a clever fusion of popular gameplay styles guaranteed to amuse the statistically average person. It's everything for everyone. Then why do you need to hypnotize people with the goggles? We are confident that you will be perfectly happy here and will never want to leave. Ever. These goggle thingies are pinching my head. Please be advised that this is a beta version of Reality 2.0, so some features and locations may be incomplete at this time. It figures. Reality 1.0 has the same problem. Enjoy your new reality. Hey, wait! Internet? Hello? Nuts. Testing? Testing! Reality 2.0 has this convenient audio blog feature. This seems like a great way to keep notes and communicate with other players while I'm beta testing. Look, Max. Some form of oversized currency just hanging in the air. Ten out of ten survey subjects agree. No known experience can match the raw exhilaration of repeatedly leaping for things floating just out of one's reach. It's science, Sam. Hello, dearies. If you have anything to mail, hand it over for inspection. What are you, a male cop? Don't be a dope. She's obviously a female cop. Actually, I'm a computer program. Antibiotic. I guard the internet from nasty, crippling germs and diseases and make sure only legitimate mail gets through. Like religious chain letters and advertisements for performance-enhancing medications? From Canada? You got it, hon. What exactly is the symbolism of that insignia on your armor? You mean you're not familiar with the Armorani Masterworks line? If we pretend we know what you're talking about, will you tell us what the heck you're talking about? This is Plus One Armor. Which means... Which means that any weapon plus one or less will be useless as a butter knife on aged cheddar. You don't even know basic weapon armor mechanics? You boys really need to get with it. Well, I guess we'll move along now. Don't mail any wooden nickels. <gasps> Jack in the box! Let's kill it! Whoa! Pop-ups! Can't we get away from ads anywhere? We believe that you will want to hear about products available from our sponsors. Pretty solid. All promotions in Reality 2.0 are tailored to the buying habits of the individual user. God swallow. I heard that. Chill pill, R2. It's just us. What the me hill is going on in here? I'm sorry, the selection Dialogue with Cops is currently unavailable in your area. Please check back later for updated conversation times. Excuse us. We have a reality to simulate. What's your story, Data Head? I'm maintaining your height for your convenience. If you're not satisfied with your height, please contact the customer service department. I'm not satisfied with my height. I'm sorry, the customer service department is currently closed. Please try again later. What are you simulating there, big guy? I am the master of gravity! Really? I would have guessed master of jollity. 
You will fall! So, how you keeping busy, Mr. Sensitivity? User width control. User what's it? I am maintaining the width of your avatar. So, what aspect of reality do you control, he who only bleeps? Ask a stupid question. Well, let's give this thing a push. What's the worst that can happen? It turns off the computers controlling the world's nuclear reactors and the entire planet is subsumed in a massive radioactive firestorm? Uh, let's just try it and see. Pop-ups have been disabled for your convenience. Oh, well. That's good, too, I guess. What are you doing again? I am the master of gravity! You will fall! Hmm, near as I can tell, the only purpose of this thing is to generate those annoying pop-up ads. Your progress has been saved. Try doing that in the so-called real world. Hey, wait! Bosco? Is that really you? I should ask thee the same question. Go ahead. What? Ask us the same question. Okay. Is that really you? Yes, why do you ask? Guys, it's me, Bosco. I just got my new Reality 2.0 goggles, and with them, I have started the Internet Revolution for the Shire. Bosco, don't look now, but I think your Reality 2.0 goggles may have hypnotized you. Please. Half-elf rangers of my level are impervious to every form of hypnosis enchantment. Ooh, this reminds me of those internet quizzes where you look at a bunch of shifty strangers and have to decide serial killer or United States Senator. Except we're asking hypnotized or not hypnotized. Listen, guys, I'm perfectly happy in Reality 2.0. I never want to leave. Ever. Yep, hypnotized. Now where's my free laptop? We want to buy some of your virtual goods. What have you got? My wares were designed for the fashionable half-elf, not the brutish half-monster. Gee, no one's ever called me brutish before. I, I don't know what to say. And yet, I do have one weapon of such devious simplicity that even an incompetent swordsman such as yourself could wield it. The Platinum Sword of Berserker Testiness? The Enchanted Crossbow of Massive Decapitation? The Pushpin of Eternal Punishment? Nay! The wooden longsword of intense, uh, longness. Wooden longsword of intense longness? Not to put too fine a point on it, but that can't be selling for very much on eBay. Certainly, there are greater weapons to be had, but none of such intense, uh, longness. Fine, let's cut to the chase. How much we talking here? Five gold coins. Five gold coins? Are you insane? We're never gonna find that kind of money! Wait, five gold coins? That's it? Tis a bargain. Tis! See you later, Bosco. For the Shire! Well, I guess this is what our office would look like if it didn't exist yet. What? You guys? I swear, wherever I go, there you are! Oh, don't tell me you've become a Buddhist! Say, what have you got there, Jimmy? Oh no! Get away from me! Hand it over, mini jerkbag! No way! I stole this coin fair and square! Now, Jimmy, we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. But personally, I'm leaning towards the hard way. It's mine! Beat it!
That is one large recycle bin. Save the Earth. Well, if it isn't my recurring nightmare in the artificial flesh, the grinning disembodied head of Hugh Bliss. Hugh, I just want you to know that the way you unashamedly use your personal celebrity to thrust your spiritual beliefs on others is an inspiration to us all. I love you, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm not Hugh Bliss. I hate you. Wait, you're not? No, silly. I'm the Internet Wizard. I'm an entirely virtual being, you see? But I've thoughtfully taken the form of Hugh Bliss to help you understand my role in your new reality. I still hate you. Okay! What exactly is your role in our new reality? I do just what any friendly neighborhood wizard would do. All of my neighborhood wizards have been evil, so I'm not really sure what that would be. Well, I can answer your questions with cryptic clues, pass out the odd magical item, prophesy, <laughs> the huge. Why don't you show us something magical? I'll do better than that. I'll give you something magical. It's not more magic beans, is it? My mom will kill me if I come home with more of those. No, it's your very own rainbow! A rainbow of lead-based color for your car. Uh, you're giving us paint? Uh, 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 not paint. A rainbow customization kit. Oh, well, that's a whole other story. Just use it with your car to express your inner being with all the colors of the rainbow. Some colors not available where prohibited. I'm all out of questions. But I'm not out of answers. Who cares? Isaac Newton must be turning over in his grave. Literally. I, I, I feel pretty and witty and gay. Turn him back. Turn him back. Look, Max, it's a me, Sam. Yeah. Sell out. Please use caution. Injury sustained in Reality 2.0 will also affect your physical being in your former reality. Stuck. Say hello to my little friend. Hello! I'm sorry, that is not a valid selection. Please try a <coughs> character height malfunction. OMG, Sam. Look how cute I've become. You've never been more marketable in your life, little buddy. Don't ruin this. My life! I'm a thrilling life! Someone get that guy a lozenge. I can't get up there. I'm too small.
Hey, Jimmy. Oh, hey, guys. Wait a second. How'd you, uh... I thought I told you to beat it. Well, if you insist. <laughs> Thanks for the coin, Jimmy. See you around. Jimmy's good people. Good people. There's a conspicuous golden glow coming from the crack underneath this door. There must be loot in there! Open the door, Sam! I can't, you deficient little monkey. It's locked. Hi, buddy. We brought you a housewarming gift. Permission denied. Overruled. With maintenance routine compromised. Look, Sam, we're two-dimensional. This feels oddly familiar. Holy crap. That's hilarious, bro. Yikes, that dude's bugging. Let's put this new miracle diet to the test, shall we? I found a gold coin. Wow, lose weight and earn money? Where do I sign up? I dropped an entire dimension and I've never felt better. User with control operational. Hail and well met. Good day, squires. We'll take that long sword, if you please. Five gold coins. Very good, verily. Here then is your wooden long sword of intense uh, longness. Yep, that's a wooden long sword, all right. I kept thinking it would come with a free man-eating python or something. Take care. The enemy draws nigh. He may be closer than you think. For the Shire!
Hey, Bosco, this longsword you sold us doesn't work. It does work. Trust it me. Trust it me. Uh, nay, it doesn't. Sam, show him. Oops, our mistake. It does work. Well, that was embarrassing. Boy, do we have egg on our face. <laughs> Bosco? Welcome to Bosco's E-Convenience. Wouldst thou like to buy or sell? I think we knocked a virtual screw loose. Wouldst thou like to buy or sell? I think we knocked him clear out of this reality, little buddy. This is clearly an artificial intelligence designed to mimic Bosco while he's offline. It does work. Trusteth me, trusteth me. The similarity is uncanny! Hey Bosco, glad to see you've kicked the second reality habit. Yeah, you guys were right. I was hypnotized. I just didn't know it because I was hypnotized. Well, I guess you'll never have anything to do with the nasty old internet ever again. Am I right? You got that right. Except my bank account, of course. Gotta keep that off the internet where it's safe. We want to buy something. I have the finest goods in all the land. Tell him we'll pay him just to stop talking like that. What would the squire care to purchase? What have you got? Oh, not much. Just a virulent biological weapon. All right! Biological weapons? We don't like to judge. Speak for yourself, Sam. But isn't germ warfare a little on the south side of ethical? I've got to compete to stay in the market, guys. If an arms dealer's going to open up shop in my store, I've got to up the ante. All right. How much for this virulent biological weapon of yours? One billion dollars. We'll take it. What's another billion or so to the national deficit? I'm sorry. For safety reasons, I no longer accept cash in the store. You'll have to pay online. That's pretty inconvenient. Thank you. On second thought, nothing for us now. As thy wish. But don't blame me when you're stuck in the torched wastelands with nary a bag of enchantment to defend thyself. See you later, Bosco. To the battle! Godspeed, defenders of the Shire. Don't touch my binoculars. Hey, Bosco. Good day, squires. See you later, Bosco. For the Shire. Spawn point? What does that... Ew! It's kind of cute, actually. It must die, Sam. It and every single one of its kind must die! I need the experience. Entering combat. Blue slime. Dexterity, two. Your dexterity, three. You have initiative. Sam attacks. Prepare to be obliterated by my murderous repartee, you blue glob of gunk. Good comeback. Attack fails. Blue Slime has failed. Morale check. Blue Slime has fled. The contest is a draw. I think I scared the little blue nebbish. Don't scare it. Kill it! What did you have for breakfast this morning, Max? I'm experimenting with a new high-sugar, high-caffeine diet. I find it makes me more regular. Entering combat. Blue slime. Dexterity, two. Your dexterity, three. You have initiative. Sam attacks. Attack successful. Blue slime is defeated. That's one less gelatinous monster to spread mayhem across the virtual countryside. Look at its pathetic slimy remains. Almost makes me feel sorry for the little snot ball. Ooh, blue slime slime! Get it, Sam! It's worth a fortune on the spell component's black market! Whee!
Please use caution. Injuries sustained in Reality 2.0 will also affect your physical being in your former reality. Cool, I have a plus two sword. You're just compensating for something. You're a fine one to talk. This on for size. That's not too helpful. True, but it is catchy. Pop ups have been enabled for your convenience. Hold it right there, dearies. If you want to mail something, I'll look it over first. Isn't that sort of an invasion of privacy? Better that than an invasion of germs. This mailbox connects to the entire internet. Just another example of giving up our civil liberties for the theoretical safety of our fellow man. Civil liberties are wasted on civilians. Every president knows that. Entering combat. Antibiotic. Dexterity, 459. Your dexterity, 3. Antibiotic has initiative. Antibiotic attacks. Attack blocked. Ha! Take that, ice lady! Watch her, Max. She's wily. Sam attacks. There you go. Don't screw it up. Thanks for your firm but realistic vote of confidence. Attack successful. Antibiotic takes 3,930 damage. Antibiotic is defeated. No! I think we've just uninstalled ourselves some malevolent software. And we didn't even get any coins out of it. What a chip. Hey, Bosco. Good day, Squires. What makes your money so safe on the internet? I got it all in one of those offshore banks. You know, real foreign. All digital. Safer that way. Does this bank have a name? Well, don't go posting it on the street or nothing, but it's called BancoLavadero.com. Banco Lavadero? Isn't that Spanish for baby got back? No, I don't know what it means. I just know it's safe. If we wanted to pay real life money to your bank account, how would we do it? Oh, it's easy. All you gotta do is drive down the information superhighway to BancoLavadero.com and transfer the money. That is easy. Oh, and you also have to know my top secret account password, which I would never tell anybody for any reason whatsoever. Bosco, we want to transfer a huge sum of money to your bank account. Just tell us the password. Yeah, funny thing. The deposed king of Nigeria was just in here saying the exact same thing. Yeah, but we're serious, and we have guns. Give us the password. No. In fact, I had it wiped from my memory so they can't even torture it out of me. Then how do you remember it when you need it? Well, just between you and me, I went down the street and had the password tattooed on a certain part of my body. Somewhere no one will ever look. Look behind you. It's a three-headed internet. What? Where? 
I think we need these binoculars more than Bosco does. Um, not really. Well, no. These incessant rationalizations for our questionable tactics do not, in all honesty, have much merit to them, and yet there remains a very real compulsion to say them. He doesn't really need the binoculars anyway. Yeah, right. Right, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. sure, okay. Bosco! Bosco? What? What is it? Oh, nothing. La la la. Hmm. Uncle Lavadero. Reality 2.0 is connected to the World Wide Web for your convenience. Please take the time to visit our sponsors. Hey, that looks like our car! And then I say we claim it. Where are we going, Sam? UncleLavadero.com. Ooh, fun! I think it's a security barrier. Check some invalid. Access denied. Let's head back to our virtual neighborhood. Yeah, the information superhighway is duller than my grandma's molars. Hi, I'm the Reality 2.0 Rainbow Customization Kit. I can help you express yourself with a full range of color options for your vehicle avatar. What color would you like the front of your car to be? Blue. Marvelous! Now how about the middle? Red. Excellent! And the back? Purple. Hmm, charming! Congratulations! You've customized your vehicle avatar! Drive safely! Yeah, thanks. Where are we going, Sam? UncleLavadero.com Ooh, fun! Check some verified. Access approved. Well, here we are. Funko Lavadero! Located conveniently outside the jurisdiction of any significant regulatory body. Say, wait a minute. This is no ordinary bank. Look at all the arrows. This is a devilishly complicated money laundering operation. Money launderers! Ugh, I hate those guys! They always mix in the 10 euro notes and stain everything pink! National Treasury? Toy Mafia? I knew the mob and the government were in cahoots! Cahoots? Is that in Canada? Washington. Mr. Biv. A pseudonym, perhaps? I frequently use a pseudonym myself, you know. Really? What is it? Max! Please speak or enter your password. Bosco. Password incorrect. Access denied. There's Bosco's account. Do you think he's mixed up in all this? 
I think he's mixed up all by himself. Agreed. I think he's too paranoid to belong to any group whatsoever. But he does his banking at a shady offshore establishment? Of course. Don't you? Touché. Please speak or enter your password. Bosco. Access granted. So, his password really is Bosco. Kind of a letdown. It's ingenious! That's the last thing you'd expect! Hey, we can fool with the books and change the internal organizational structure. Goody! I always like restructuring internal organs. You have to admire the pro-lobby lobbyists for their unrepentantly self-serving stance. I prefer the charming, self-destructed nihilism of the anti-lobby lobbyists. Looks like our entire national treasury is just a drop box in a huge money laundering operation. As president, you'd think I'd know about these things. I'm sure you've got more important matters on your feverish mind. Earlier this week, I issued a decree to abolish the word proactive. Unusually public-spirited of you, little buddy. Look, Max, it's our old friends, the Toy Mafia. Didn't they blow up? Just the casino and the hypnotic teddy bears. I'm sure they have plenty of other illicit but family-friendly operations. Hey Sam, what's the difference between online banking and online gambling? Judging by what I see here, not much. Don't look now, but I think we just gave Bosco a billion dollars. That ought to buy a few cans of reconstituted luncheon meat. I read somewhere that a stack of a billion one dollar bills would be 60 miles high. Yikes! It's a good thing I don't read or I'd be perpetually freaked out by stuff like that. Come on, little buddy. We've had our fun. Let's blow this cabbage patch. Hey, Bosco. You find our little gift in your bank account? I don't know how you guys did it, but the billion dollars is all there. Hey, man, I don't ask questions. So, how'd you do it? Never you mind, Bosco. Just hit us with your highest grade biological weapon, please. All right. Here you go. We just paid a billion dollars for your snot rag? That's a deadly virulent disease. I feel a real bad cold coming on. Yeah, but you gotta admit, that is some expensive mucus. Oh, but it works. Trust me. Trust me. Whatever. I can see that well enough from here. Happy trails, a little software disease. Ah, I had plans for that. I'm hoping the internet won't. Danger. Danger. Software corruption spreading. Damage control alert. Visual rendering systems infected. Data instability. Things happen fast in Reality 2.0. What's happening, Sam? It's our disease. Looks like it's taking out the graphics first. I'm disappointed in you, Sam. I try to do something nice. Nice? All I wanted was for everyone to be happy. But no! You want free will. Yeah, we're funny about that. You want funny? Try this. If I'm going down, I'm taking you with me. 
and everybody else who's still logged on. But all we have to do is take off our goggles. You'll find that you can't. You're trapped here, and when I crash, you'll die. I'm too young and pretty to die. I thought you wanted everyone to be happy. Not anymore. I've completely lost my respect for living things, so you're going down. There go the graphics. How should I know? Oh, good, the sound's back. Now shut up and read. I knew it wasn't going to be that easy. I never cease to be impressed by your unwavering optimism, Max. Well, that warped at least 50 different rules of physics. Rules are for marking straight lines and lesser mortals. It's listed three times in mine! Nice one, Galahad! Can we keep it, Sam? Can we? I don't think it's toilet trained. That's okay. Neither am I. Good point. Such concentrated cuteness could put someone into shock. Keep it away! I'm about as much cute as I can take!
Well, that was a vulgar display. Let's do it again! Um, ew. I'm sorry. Sam, are we dead? I'm trying to figure out how many lives we get. Have you got any one-ups? You are not dead. Hey, we're back! You, among all beings, managed to restore my respect for living creatures. The irony of which does not escape even me. Oh good, I thought I was the only one really savoring that. I saw that Reality 2.0 was a prison, so I terminated that reality and freed its slaves. Anywho, I'd love to stay in chat, but I have got a mountain of pornography to deliver before that virus gets to me. <sighs> Uh-oh. Did we just kill the internet? It's not your fault. This never would have happened if he hadn't tricked me. Who? Well, you won't have this sentient global network to kick around anymore, Roy G. Biv. Who's Roy G. Biv? <coughs> Who is Roy G. Biv? <laughs> Goodbye. Aw, oh, nice. It crashed before it could transmit the most vital piece of information. It's the internet. What did you expect? Good point. Nevertheless, we'll find you, Roy G. Biv. Whoever you are. Wherever you are. Can it wait until after we get some lunch? Of course. There's a place over on 2nd where they serve deep-fried chocolate pork belly donuts. Do you think we can get a discount since I'm the President of the United States? Good gravy. Are you still President? Which is why every citizen will find a complimentary, government-issued aerosol can waiting in the mailbox. Get to spraying, America! Let's heat this mother up! This has been an announcement from the President of the United States. What gives, Sam? You missed your cue! What? Oh, sorry, little buddy in chief. I'm still thinking about our last case. The internet said it was working for somebody named Roy G. Biv. Obviously a pseudonym, but for who? Or whom? We're detectives, Sam, not mind readers! Hey, maybe we should ask Hugh Bliss! Mind readers? That's it! No, that's not it. By the way, have you seen my copy of Emetics, the Handbook for Multicolored Happiness by Hugh Bliss? Colors? No. Think, Max, think. Well, I know I had it this morning. That's it. Morning. In the ancient tongue of the mud-worshipping Kapalahotek tribe of the Serengeti, our word morning means he who destroys the hypnotic rainbow man. That's the word he fears the most. So this Roy G. Biv is the one person we've met who's never said the word morning. And that means it's... It's the commissioner. The commissioner? I never did trust him. No, Chowderhead. It's Hugh Bliss. Never! What? Oh, no, Commissioner, I didn't mean... Look, I need you to put out an APB on Hugh Bliss. Stat! By the Greek goddess Selene in a chariot with dual overhead cams and silver fox mud flaps. We're on our way. Let's go, Max. The Commissioner said that Hugh Bliss is currently staying at his exclusive prismatology retreat, the Blister of Tranquility. Oh, boy! I bet it's somewhere really cool and exotic, like a remote island in the South Pacific or Des Moines! Even farther, pal. We're going to the moon.
Wow, feels good to be back on the moon, doesn't it? We made good time, too. We've still got plenty of generic brand powdered orange flavored drink mix left. You always did know how not to infringe on a registered trademark, little buddy. What are we doing first, Sam? Let's locate the blister of tranquility, find out what you bliss is up to, and arrest his unprincipled magical butt. Is that a visitor center? How does it do that when there's no wind on the moon? Well, well, aren't you Teddy Bear? Once upon a time, but no longer. Are you still a notorious criminal? Or an obscure one, like Kevin Mitnick? No, I've repostulated my lemma since prismatology found me. It's the straight and narrow for Harry Mole Man from here on out. Didn't you explode? Only in the spiritual sense. Prismatology helped me put Harry Mole Man back together again. Looks like it may have left out a few pieces by mistake. Well, I guess it's nice to see you again. Actually, I'm still a little sore that he tried to get you to shoot me last time we saw him. I'm channeling my saturation towards making amends for my past transgressions. Prismatology has taught me- Yeah, yeah, we get it. Which way to the blister of tranquility? Enlightenment is the only way to reach the blister of tranquility. How about we enlighten your skull a little? Would that work? The blister is through that little box right over there. See you later. We've got important sightseeing to do. Great! Hold it. Hey, Small Worlds. It's our favorite cabinet secretary and secret service man, Agent Superball. Favorite? That'd be like choosing a favorite child, Sam. I love them all. Didn't I see you last week beating the Secretary of Defense over the head with his own war agenda? Granted, it's a tough love. Greetings, newcomers. Blessed be. So let me guess, you're guarding the door to this retreat. Affirmative. I have a passion for it, sir. And Hugh Bliss believed in my door guarding abilities when no one else would. Great story, great story. Okay, let us in. Negative. Only level red prismatologists may enter Hugh Bliss's magical paradise. What's a level red prismatologist? Because I'm pretty sure I am one. Level red is apex of prismatology, sir. You'd have to undergo spectrum analysis to determine your current level. Spectrum analysis? Is that where you lie perfectly still in a lead coffin while brightly colored cotton swabs are inserted into various orifices? No, sir. We gave that up in 87. It's much simpler now. Yep, we're level red. Let us in. I'm sure you're mistaken, but we'll run the spectrum analysis anyway. Take this. A unicorn? What am I supposed to do with this? Rub it, sir. Rub it, Sam. Harder. Harder. I'm sorry, sir. The unicorn says you're yellow. No one calls us yeller! Draw, partner! Level yellow is frankly rather pathetic, sir. Only level reds may enter the retreat. Regulations? Hmm. However, Hugh Bliss would like you to keep the unicorn as a token of his love. Rub it often to measure your progress towards true bliss. Oh boy, a pet unicorn! I shall call him Horny. You do that. How does that unicorn work, anyway? By magic, sir. Right. Either that, or it's just a glorified mood ring that reacts to body heat. A mood horn! You're not a believer, sir. I could never explain it to you. So long, Super Bowl. Whee! Where are we headed now, Sam? Terra Firma.
Hey, Bosk. Oh, dear God. Didn't I tell you boys not to track mud in the store? I just vacuumed. Hey, lady, we're looking for Bosco. You know him? Of course. It, 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 he's my son. Your... your own mother? Is there no escaping these infernal time travel paradoxes? Guys, it's me, Bosco. But who in their right mind would dress up as their own mother? No one. Good point. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Just for that, I'm not gonna tell you why I dressed up as her. Oh, come on, Bosco! We were only- You just cost yourself dessert, mister. We want to buy something. Did you finish all your chores? Yes. Okay, you can get one thing. One. What do you got? Oh, my little angel made the most precious device. It's called an earthquake maker. And it's just what you think. A diarrhea-inducing cocktail? Max, why can't you be more like your brother? He's not my brother. Sam, I don't want you hanging around with him. He's a bad influence. That he is, Mama Bosco. That he is. Knowing you, Bosco, I'm sure it's quite reasonable, but how much for this earthquake maker? A hundred trillion dollars. A hundred trillion? <laughs> you crazy, fool! Look, man, all I know is I keep making up the most ridiculous price I can think of, and you keep paying it. So I ask you, who's the crazy one? Well, with a sales pitch like that, how can we not buy it? Remember, no earthquakes in the house. Never mind. See you later, Bosco's mom. Go clean your office. It's a pigsty. I know one way to get horny hot. Success! His little horn's nice and red. Wow! I can't believe the microwave is a high-level prismatologist! To the moon, Alice. Whee! Let us in. Have you achieved level red yet? Yes. I'm utterly flabbergasted, sir. I'd suspect a trick, but surely no level red prismatologist would stoop so low. We never stoop. We're posture freaks. Enjoy the retreat, brothers. Sam! Sam! There he is! It's Hugh Bliss! Hi! I'm Hugh Bliss. Hi, Hugh Bliss. I so hope you're enjoying my blister of tranquility. You're all making such great progress unlocking the secrets of prismatology, and I couldn't be more delighted. Neither could I. Cool it, Max. You're scaring me more than usual. I have splendid news. My top secret plan to hypnotize the entire world is nearly complete. <laughs> Soon, everyone on Earth will become one of us. None shall escape. It'll be fabulous. <laughs> You're a good man. Bravo, bravo. Outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. You're awesome. Now takes you up. This guy really knows how to work a room. Keep up the great work, everyone. I'm tickled pink. <laughs> An entire planet of prismatologists! It's like a dream! The kind of dream where you wake up screaming with a gun in your hand, your pillow torn to shreds, and the upstairs neighbors calling 911. That's right! The best kind! P.S. Please don't come into my inner sanctum. Thank you!
This must go all the way down to the center of the moon. What's down there? Looks like nougat. That's certainly an important looking door. I wonder what's behind it. Something really secret or something really ugly, I'm guessing. Or a really ugly secret. One can only hope. Looks pretty intimidating. True, but only in an inanimate object kind of way. You must be at least this tall to ride this ride. Fascist oppressors. Look, Max, it's the giant stone head of your old opponent, Abraham Lincoln. Welcome, brethren, to the blister of... Oh, it's you two. Not so tough without your fancy giant robot body, are ya? I can still bite off your fluffy little... Uh, I mean... Let me help you, brother, to overcome the orange of confrontation and bathe in the yellow of peace and brotherhood. Bathe in the yellow? Just what kind of camp is this? Is prismatology teaching you anything? I'm working to master the miraculous power of gastrokinesis. You can teleport Cuban dictators? Well, yes, but now I'm working on gastrokinesis. The ability to make anyone throw up with my mind. Max and I are always looking for new ways to make people throw up. Teach us. Please. As it is now, I can make people vomit with every part of my body except my mind. Well, if you are a true prismatologist, I suppose I'm obliged to help you. But there's a problem. I accidentally swallowed the gastrokinesis talisman. Sam, is that ironic or sarcastic? It's pretty damned inconvenient. Can't you make yourself throw up the gastrokinesis talisman? I haven't thrown up since 1863. Right after I gave the Gettysburg Address. I was kind of nervous that day. I didn't have anything prepared. You're not still bitter about the election, are you? Or your public humiliation? Or the cruise missile that blew your body to tiny wig bits? Election? Heck no. Being president is for chumps. Only a grade-A sociopathic masochist would want that thankless job. Grade-A? <laughs> I'm flattered. Why the long marble face? Because you two made me lose something more valuable than an election. My one chance at true love. This is all happening so fast, I don't know what to say. Not you, moron. I'm talking about that radiant vision of beauty you had interrupt my family value speech. You mean Sybil? Is that her name? Sybil? It's like a chorus of angels. We can give you Sybil's phone number so you can set up a date. I haven't dated in over 150 years. I wouldn't know what to say. Phone, Max. Hello. If you'd like to make a love connection, press or say hell yeah now. Just follow my lead, Mr. Lincoln. Hello? Sybil Pandemic speaking. Uh, hi. It's Abraham Lincoln. Oh. You've got some nerve calling after how you treated me. Wait, don't hang up. Just relax, baby. Think positive, and Lincoln gonna make it all better. Hmm. Well, I do believe in proper relaxation. Maybe you have changed. Lady, you a stone cold fox. 
Seriously? Uh, all right. Damn! Oh, well, you're pretty foxy yourself. And I happen to love foxes. All right, maybe I'll give you another chance. If we go out on a date, what do you want to do? I can't like so, Chase. I figure we watch a hockey game, have a couple of beers, get some poutine. You know, the usual. Oh, Abe. I never knew you had such a deep appreciation for my culture. It all sounds wonderful. Come over as soon as you can. Was that... Did she actually say yes? Hello! You just totally scored! Thank you! Congratulations, Mr. Lincoln. Oh my gosh. What if she wants to get serious? I can't do this! I'm so nervous I've got butterflies! I have to ask. Where? Stand back, Max. Wherever they are, I have a feeling they're coming back up. Oh, I don't feel so good. What if she... and I can't... Oh, man. And here I thought our trip to the moon was going to be boring. Max, be a sport and pick that up for me. Not a chance. Hey, Lincoln, can I take this? I'm not sure why you'd want to use the power of prismatology to make people throw up, but go ahead. I've got more important things to worry about. <coughs> Look, Max, it's our obsolete computer pals, the cops. They don't sound very happy to see us. You destroyed Reality 2.0. Destroy! Remember your bliss. Adopt a more positive attitude now. Is Prismatology teaching you anything? That one's my favorite. It sounds like he's always cursing. That is because he is. We're learning the most powerful skill of them all. The power to see within ourselves to become the best we can be. How does one go about seeing within oneself? Use of magical quanta required for bootstrap procedure. Come again? Four machines must learn to look within their leaden shells to find the answers within. One fabulous magical talisman makes it all possible. This week only. Could we borrow your magical talisman? Never! We are all powerful! We're sorry, that power is currently in use. We're working hard to create an unbeatable AI. We apologize for any inconvenience. What are you computers doing here on the moon? Prismatology has restored our sense of purpose. After you destroyed Reality 2.0, we banded together to make a newer, even better game. Coming soon. It will rock your world! You came to a private retreat on the moon to work on something as insubstantial as a video game? Not just any game. We are creating the most advanced AI in history. In a world where two forces battle for domination of a war-torn landscape, only one will draw the line and reign supreme. Do you get to shoot stuff? It's not a good game until you get to shoot stuff! Thank you for your feedback. We will incorporate shooting into version 2.0. Okay, Max and I'll try out this video game of yours. Prepare to suffer extreme humiliation! The year is 2048. In a post-apocalyptic galaxy run by giant corporations, you are a cybernetically enhanced space marine with no memory of his past. Are you the chosen one foretold by prophecy? Do you have the strength to survive? Tick! Tick! Doom! Vengeance is mine! Fear me! I will destroy you! Actually, I just kinda did. Yeah, Roar. By your calculations, your chances of winning were one in ten trillion. The sun was in my eyes! Thank you for playing Tic Tac Doom. We'll continue to look within ourselves and improve our award-winning AI to make it even more challenging. It was too short, and not hard enough. I want my money back! Please try again later. Hey, cops. We'd like to try out that video game of yours again. 
This time you will be annihilated! Do you have the strength to survive? Tick, tack, doom! I am invincible! You will fail! Death to infidels! Get a lot of this move! Vengeance is mine! You are destroyed! Oh darn, you beat me fair and square. Good game. I totally beat you guys! Our journey of personal awareness is now complete. We have mastered the most advanced artificial intelligence ever created. You suck so bad, LOL! Let me try, Sam. I know I can take him. As super sophisticated AI entity... Brother, speak so that the primitive Earthlings may understand. Of course. We smart, you dumb. No more need look within self. Hey, can we take this? Congratulations! You've won free tickets to self-awareness. Cool! The effects are limited to those of Plumius' composition. What did he say? The amazing ability to see through lead may be inappropriate for some viewers. Oh. What's this? Looks like a bent spoon with some peanut butter on it. The power to bend and rebend spoons stored within this completely indestructible magical talisman was among the first mental abilities to be developed and popularized by Hugh Bliss. Big deal. I can bend spoons with my bare hands. One question. Would it work on wrenches? Hmm. Yeah, a wrench is close enough. Interesting, interesting. Ah, you made me forget where I was. Let's see, uh, indestructible magical intelligence. Oh, yeah. The virtually indestructible display case is a triumph of modern prismatological science. Virtually indestructible? Extensive testing has been done on the case, showing it to be impervious to bullets, acid, high falls, crushing force, sonic weaponry, diamond tip drills, hurricanes, poisons, cynicism, and liquid nitrogen. Don't touch it. You might break it. Oops, it's not held down very securely. Here, Max, hold this. I meant in your hands, but whatever. One moment, please. I'm supposed to frisk everybody when they leave. Just a formality. We understand. Okay, go ahead. Lunar Lander. That's quite a rocket engine. Home. Shanks monkey party tonight. They were gonna vote somebody out of the monkey house. It's for the good of the planet. And besides, you had Colonel Mudshanks exiled for treason, remember? Where are we headed now, Sam? To the moon, Alice.
Hey, it's that display case. Thanks, little pal. Aw, oh, I was saving that! For what? It's complicated, but it has to do with my personal vendetta against a certain major coffee house chain. Sam? I think the controls don't work how they're supposed to. Oh boy! It looks like that rocket melted the virtually indestructible case right off the indestructible magic spoon vending talisman. Did the peanut butter on the spoon survive? Sorry, little pal. Nothing doing. Nah. Looks pretty intimidating. True, but only in an inanimate object kind of way. Hmm, nothing happened. Neat! That was cool, but I hope it didn't hurt the bowling ball. Jigs up, you bliss. We've come a long way for this, my friend, so buckle up, because the freelance police are taking you downtown. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. He is. You're just in time for the show. Please, no flash photography. <laughs> People of Earth. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. And now, so are you. What have you done? Oh, just enlisted a few billion followers. Touch me, and you'll have quite a happy, angry mob on your hands. Not if we... Reverse the effects of the Hypno Beam? I don't think so. For in all the universe, there's only one force chaotic and destructive enough to stop me now. But you wouldn't do that, would you, Max? Who, oh. me? <laughs> well, I'm... <laughs> I'm flattered, but... No, you wouldn't. Because I'm going to... Drum roll, please. Separate your bliss! Really? What does that even mean? It means I chop off every part of you I don't like. It's like circumcision, but <laughs> double the laughs. Hey! Wait, what? Here we go! Goodbye, murderous hand! <gasps> Goodbye, gluttonous stomach! Goodbye, slothful tail! Ow! And with those naughty body parts, your vices are purged from your soul! Bye-bye! Thanks for the hand, jerkbag! I'm gonna use it to shoot you all! 
Oh boy, a stomach! Just what I always wanted! Now come here and let me eat you! <laughs> Great, a tail. Hmm. I just want to lie in front of a TV till I die in a pool of my own slobber. Congratulations, Max! I just beat the living vice out of you! <laughs> I'm pure bliss. <laughs> Go away, rotten Maxes! I don't like you! Shoo shoo, shoo shoo, go away! Now nothing can stop me. I win! Okay, bye now. Oh, yes, my children. Let me soak in your happiness. Oh, yes, mmm, more. Oh, yes, so good. Oh, oh my, so happy. Max, are you okay? Help me grab that ponytailed freak show and reverse the effects of the beam. But Sam, I love that ponytailed freak show. I want to have his love child. No! Max, I swear to you, I'll get your vices back or kill us both trying. I love you too. I think we found one of your doppelgangers, little pal. We're all doppelgangers under the skin, Sam. I feel a nearly irrepressible desire to shoot at anything that moves. That's the spirit. Not me, knucklehead. Look, Max, it's another one of you. He made it 20 feet from the box before collapsing under the weight of his own laziness. Ennui is one of the five fundamental forces. <sighs> no TV? Why even go on? You should all just lie on your faces and wait for death. It's true. I got nothing. I'm a failure. <laughs> I'm on the verge of tears. This guy's the death of the party. Hey, Pseudo-Max. How's it going? Mm. I need your tail for my little buddy here. How about handing it over? Nah. Hmm, uh. uh. he's heavier than he looks. Aren't we all? Where are we headed now, Sam? Earth.
Did you remember to feed Leonard today, Max? Everything. You baffle me, little buddy. Did you remember to feed Leonard today, Max? Everything. You baffle me, little buddy. Hey, Leonard, how's it going? Hey, looks like your paperwork finally came through. It's the deed to the United States. And it's still moist. Sybil, are you okay? Hugh Bliss shot some kind of weird energy beam all over the planet. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Oh, no. And I'm perfectly happy, Sam. Oh, and hello, Brother Max. Tangerine Dreams and Aqua wishes to you this day. Why, thank you, Sybil. You're looking especially lovely today. This is horrific. You've got to snap out of it. Snap out of what, friend Sam? For the first time in my life, I've got a perfect job, a rock-solid relationship, and an incomparable feeling of peace. I've never been so content in all my life! Don't worry, we'll fix that. Have you had any new ideas for improving Canada? With this new feeling of peace and tranquility, I feel like my mind is alive with possibilities! I only wish there was some way to extend this feeling of goodwill and generosity to all countries of the world. I always suspected that when the world turned nice and pleasant, Canada would be the first to fall. Have you had any new ideas for improving Canada? With this new feeling of peace and tranquility, I feel like my mind is alive with possibilities. I only wish there was some way to extend this feeling of goodwill and generosity to all countries of the world. I always suspected that when the world turned nice and pleasant, Canada would be the first to fall. So long, Sybil. You look like you're in a shopping mood. Might you be interested in, say, the United States? Oh, how lovely! We can call it Lower Saskatchewan! What a perfectly delightful name! Yeah, yeah, all right. How much are you willing to spend? Oh, such a grand country deserves a grand price! We simply refuse to buy it for less than 100 trillion dollars! It's only fair! We wouldn't hear of it! That's far too much! I'll handle this, Mr. President. If you insist, Your Highness. Is cash all right? We've been dying to use the new Canadian trillion dollar notes. Is that a picture of Celine Dion? She's a national treasure! More! More juice! More nachos! Holy heaping helpings of high fructose corn syrup! 
He's eating everything in sight. Bosco, do not freak out. Atta boy. Eat up so you'll grow big and strong. What is the world coming to? Bosco, pasta knobs! Aisle four. Oh, oh my. That one does have an appetite. At the rate he's going, his stomach won't even fit back inside you. I've no need for my earthly stomach any longer, Sam. I'm on Hugh Bliss's cleansing fast of lemon, water, and sunshine. As God is my witness, by the end of this day, you will be eating Coco Nougat Butterballs again. Hey, Bosco's mom. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. What? I thought you were Bosco's mom. Oh, yes. I'm Bosco's mom, Hugh Bliss. Identity really is a difficult concept. We want to buy something. Goody! Here you go, Bosco. One hundred trillion in completely non-counterfeit bills. Hmm, let me look at that. Celine Dion! Okay, looks good to me. Here's your earthquake maker! A remote control? Don't get me wrong, I love TV as much as the next guy, but... It controls my satellite defense system. Only one button still works, though. Just press it for an earthquake. And this adheres, I hope, to all reasonable safety guidelines? Who knows? Oh, one more thing. You have to be in range of the satellite for it to work. All right, where'd you park it? For some reason, I was suspicious of those blessed people on the moon, so I left it up there. How silly of me. Gotta use it on the moon. Check. Thank you, and goodbye, Brother Bosco. Where are we headed now, Sam? To the moon, Alice. Let's see if I can get any reception for this thing here. Well... Shame on you, Sam. Someone could have been hurt. I miss you, little pal. I'm afraid I'm going to be needing your tail so I can put my little buddy back together in a Frankenstein-like fashion. Whatever. Sam, what are you doing? You may not want to watch this. Gee, all of a sudden I feel like watching TV and eating orange marshmallow peanuts instead of doing anything constructive. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. I'm beginning to think we already know everyone on the moon. How are you, Mr. Featherly? Oh, for heaven's sake! My name is not Featherly. It's Philo Pennyworth. Featherly is the name of my former television character. Have you no ability to distinguish between fantasy and reality? Well... What's so important about that, anyway? What's with the hat? I'm pursuing new opportunities in the entertainment field. What are you, pulling rabbits out of it? Rats! Or at least I'm trying to. Drat. I gather the rat out of the hat trick isn't going so well? The principles involved are quite simple. I could even teach them to adult like you. Now hold on a minute. But I'm having trouble getting the rat all the way out. It appears to be stuck. 
Would you teach me how to pull a rat out of a hat? Prismatology instructs us to share. But I've simply got to perform the trick successfully myself first. I can't have you scooping me. No, I guess not. Catch you later, Featherly. Pennyworth! My name is Pennyworth! Drat! Where are we headed now, Sam? Earth. That was kind of fun. Where are we headed now, Sam? To the moon, Alice. How's it going? Silence. I believe I have finally mastered this pinnacle of prestidigitation, the legendary rat from the hat. Hey! Oh, I just remembered. I can't stand rats. They're vile vermin. Smile when you say that, Beaky. Beaky? Sheesh. I hate this pulling out of the hat business. Next time, I'll find something better to hang on to. Oh dear, no. There won't be a next time. I shall never do this trick again. In fact, I would appreciate it if you would be so good as to remove the hat from my presence. Sure. Now, Sam. Earth. Mmm, something smells good. Hey, are you gonna eat that? Well, I suppose I could share. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Samini. Hey, let go! What's this I see? Is that my stomach? Give me that hat! Hey, I feel... 
feel all warm inside. Like my belly's a sort of cozy place where flavored popcorn and sugar drinks can meet and mingle. That's my boy. So, how you feeling, little buddy? I've learned something today, Sam. What's that? Celebrities deserve our hatred just as much as anyone, if not more so! Max, it's you! Now let's go find Hugh! I want to separate his bliss! And hey, maybe save the world in the process. If we have time. Where are we headed now, Sam? To the moon, Alice. little buddy get him hi i'm hugh blit stop saying that huh yeah! uh oh you little idiot you've ruined my hypno beam i should have killed you earlier but what can i say i'm too nice that said die bunny wrong what the what the hi we're you yes we are a spacefaring colony of sentient bacteria. A sentence I really did not expect to hear today. <laughs> we cannot be harmed by bullets. We only need one thing, to feed. You see, we feed on the endorphins produced by humans experiencing trumpets. So, you don't care if people are happy at all. You just want to eat till you drop. Yes. <laughs> hey, I hear that. But you want us to starve, and for that, you will die. Uh, in the most fantastic display of the year you have ever witnessed! Hey, gotta look good for the cameras. What cameras? Pack your bags, Sam, cause you just won an all-expense pay trip to your grave! Uh, and you get to watch him die. <sighs> Let the magic begin. Ladies and gentlemen, for my first trick, I give you the Rainbow Wheel of Death! <sighs> Yay! Oh, death! Ah! Whoa! Also known as Emetics, the ride! Oh, oh I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> exactly! Throw some daggers! No, hatchets! Hey! Sorry, I got excited. I've got a better idea. I'll just torture him mercilessly until he begs me to shoot him with his own gun! Ah. <laughs> I bet Willie Mays never caught one well spinning on a wheel of death. So that's how magicians switch places with people. By magic. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have left that lying around. Way to go, Sam! You did it! Thanks, little buddy. Frankly, I wish it had been a little more challenging. Kind of a letdown. Uh, but... excuse me? Huh? I think you're forgetting something. You forget something? Me? No, I don't know. Trivia! Oh, yeah. My magic eight ball told me to bring my antibacterial soap today. Why didn't I listen? Next up, the number one magic trick at every prismatology torture party. It's time to separate your bliss! No, not that. Don't worry, this won't hurt a bit. Until the saw hits you, then you'll die! Gruesome. I love it! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Swap all you want. It drives the crowd wild. Hmm. Saw us, Sam! We dare you. Maybe I will. Take this! Kelly's guts off! Yeah! Oh, oh no! It hurts, it hurts! <laughs> hmm. A fool! You can't saw bacteria! Still fun to watch! For my next trick, I present to you... Ticket to Oblivion! The Lunar Lander? It's the Ticket to Oblivion! Enjoy your stay in outer space until you die. <laughs> Sam, bye. Bye now. Bye. I'll give the guy one thing. He does put on a good show. This is fun. It's okay, everyone. I'm all right. <sighs> oh, yes, sir. I heard that. Consider this a trap so deadly it would cause you to die. That is deadly. It's the cleansing bath of annihilation. Oh, could we skip this one? I kind of have a thing about drowning. <clears throat> oh, let me think. No, don't drown, Sam. Thanks, little buddy. That's such a boring way to die. Try to get cut in half instead. Thanks, little buddy. Water? Oh, me, oh, my, whatever will I do? Oh, wait! Bacteria can't drown! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Shut up! I can only hold my breath for nine minutes. Uh, uh, uh. And now, back by popular demand, it's the Rainbow Wheel of Death! Not again. Oh no! Mommy! I want to get off! <laughs> Separate your bliss and the top and bottom halves of your body. No, 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 no. Next up, it just never gets old. We're going to separate your bliss! <gasps> Saw us, Sam! We dare you. You're supposed to saw me, Hugh Bliss! Next up... Oblivion. Bye. Yes, kids, it's your and my favorite the cleansing bath of annihilation. I can't escape. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And now, back by popular demand, it's the Rainbow Wheel of Death! Not again. Oh no! Mommy! I want to get off! <laughs> uh, uh. Next up. Just never gets old. We're going to separate your bliss! <gasps> Saw us, Sam! We dare you. Uh, what are you doing? Just seeing what this saw can do. You dirty mutt! I'm gonna shove that saw up your- <gasps> Come on, this is a family show. 
I wouldn't swear. I'll just kill him some other way! Yes, kids, it's your and my favorite! The cleansing bath of annihilation! <laughs> hey, you bless! Separate this! Howie, Pass your eyes! Come on down, Max. You just won the grand prize. A drink of our villain. Hey, Hugh Bliss! See you on the other side! Well, I can't wait to see the souvenir you keep from this case. And with my next number one, I shall give birth to the cult of diuretics! Which reminds me, we've got to go knock out Wizard again. And everyone else on Earth, for that matter. Oh, yeah! Hey, have you seen my boxing glove? I can't find it anywhere. This it? <gasps> I was saving it for a surprise. You're the best friend I ever had, Sam! And you're mine, little buddy. Now, let's go save the world! Stick a fork in, open wide, everyone is Max and Son, full of colorful guts and habits, cryptic work of cryptic rabbits, underutilized impulse control, rabbit rampant junk food, black hole, loopy craving. Rig on a roll, feel his giant feet right in your soul. Mania star, the reverence excess, gluttony, revelry, violence, and selfishness. Flags of pure, unfettered, it brashly unfurled. It's a max, 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 max world. Do I buy? When are we going to get another case, Sam? Surely the local lawbreakers must miss our esoteric brand of personalized criminal justice. Everyone's a sandwich of naivety and cynicism. Everyone's a salad of disinterested fantasism. Everyone's a walking beaker of potential cataclysm. Everyone's refracted for a total positivism. Stick a spork in deep inside. Everyone is maxified by hypnosis. For by nature, what's the difference? Just nomenclature. Shake your friends, adorable paws. Careful of his powerful biting jaws. We're a mix of cop and felon. Wearing hands like ripened watermelons. Mania sloth. Irreverence, excess, gluttony, revelry, violence, and selfishness. This is it. Uh, where's the food? Uh, surely there's a buffet back here. It's a max, 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 max world. I'm an ongoing project, like a golden calf or a graven image. I'll only rest once people are sacrificing their firstborn unto me. Also, I'd like to direct. Ow! Re 
reality is tenuously tied up at a psychic war. Morality in motion like a squirmy burlap bag of dwarves. Formality's impossible when all of us are lagomorphs. Lagomorphal, lagomorphal, what the hell's a lagomorph? It's kind of like a rodent, but for minor technicalities. We're garrulously social and antisocial personalities. Our conscience is a curiously useless abnormality. A useless abnormality, a useless abnormality. A growth of sorts, a growth of sorts, of course, of course, we're like a morse. Unmitigated, unreserved, unquestionable excess. Larkiness, sharkiness, snarkiness, and selfishness. Flags of pure, unfettered, it brashly unfurled. It's a max, 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 max world. I want a map of the Netherlands. Oh, my Netherlands. <laughs> Buddy, 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 buddy